Okay, so I'm back and um, I found, I, I, I figured out where the screw came from already. Um, so I'll just show you that. There's, um, you can see it in this screen capture. It's emerging from the bottom of the, the main plate there. And, um, Here, here you can see the time is 1.12.42. That's the same frame. This is just a QuickTime player. 1.12.42, it's emerging there. So then if we go to the 1.12.42. Oh, I think I, oh, that's a different shot. Okay, so 1.12.42 of, this is the main movie. So, Oh wait, that's not the right movie. It's camera five. This is the recent recording we did, right? So 112. So here you can see it come out. Stop, stop it with the uh, stupid bar. It's about to come out. Oh, 10 seconds. It's gonna come out right here. Come on, two seconds. There it is, okay. And guess what that is? If you were watching from the beginning, four hours, four and a half hours ago, you might remember that the edges of this thing have these screw holes in them for the screws to hold the face the screws that hold the face are the dial pins in place. Is that the right hole? Yeah. So that's where it came out of. And uh, and uh, we also kind of knew that was loose. There's no tension on it. So that's why it was easy to get out. Also kind of negates my thing about, I was saying um, you have you, you you still have to worry about the effect of of a ultrasonic the ability of ultrasonic to um, unscrew a screw, but these screws were not screwed in at all. I don't think this will focus on that there. Oh, maybe it will. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna screw that back in there. Um. <clears throat> Now this is the first, in, I'm not done disassembling, unfortunately, but this is the first kind of reassembly. So it's kind of the same problem of um, how do you, how do you do this safely and not lose track of these screws? Um, So I'm going to use the Radico uh, to grab this and then try to place it. I'm using a point half a millimeter screwdriver. Hmm. Screwdriver has a tiny bit of magnetism, which is actually kind of good. I can tell this is going to be pretty fun. The problem, of course, is magnet pushes it in, magnet pulls it out. So you got to 
get on there and bind I have done some small screw things before where I actually well there's two things you can use Radico to kind of stick it to the screwdriver or you can use Radico as a screwdriver <clears throat> See, it's, it, it goes everywhere. The rubber mat does not help. It's springy. So maybe I can use Radico as a screwdriver. Um... Let me try to make sure that's focused. I need to change the... Oh. Use a larger screen for the focus on that. <clears throat> okay, so what I'm going to try to do is stabilize this with a tiny bit of Radico from the side. So the magnet, magnetism doesn't just yank the screw right out. Turn the screw a couple times to get it to start. Okay, I think I did it. So... You know, that, that screw is the size of like a, a grain of sand. Um, and there, there you can see the hole that it, that's the hole for the, the face, um, the dial, you know, shaft. But what's interesting is that the, and the other screw I can see is there, it didn't come out. And that's the other hole for the, uh, for the dial pin. Um, so the, 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 that screw, even though it's like the size of a gr grain of sand, it's got a point on it that digs into the side of that dial pin. Um, so it's like, e e the, even those microscopic details, because you need, it needs to assert itself in that, in the side of that dial pin. Um, now, I think I, I cheated and I touched this with my fingers, and that's going to be I don't know how I'm going to avoid doing that. Um, I'm not going to re-clean it every time I just make a mistake like that. Um, okay, so that's that. Oh, I wanted to show something else that I discovered while I was doing this. So there was a point on Friday where This thing popped, this plate popped off and screws went flying. So I did slow motion of that. Actually, the, the, just to go back to that, what happened was, hmm, we don't have the, the assembled watch here, but basically there was a plate here, I lifted it and this gear shot at me and this little, this little part here also shot at me and it bounced around but you can see that happen in this video I, I i did it in this is like frame by frame you see the gear shoot out and then you see the little uh it's going to play it's looping back and forth so when i lift the gear is about to shoot out there's the gear and that hit me in the stomach and went under the or hit my chest and went underneath the the platform I was working on and then you can see this this little part here went there and the reason I, I reviewed that is because it's important to know that I'm not missing anything at least not from that event so I could see clearly enough there that there were two objects and I got both of those objects back 
two objects sprung out. And I think in the end, that was the unwinding of the barrel spring, but who knows? Okay, so now I think the next step would be um, I think I have another video on here, which is, yeah. Can I flip this? Shouldn't I be able to rotate that? Come on, I know you could do that, right? Rotate. I'll rotate it left twice. Okay, the reason I want to do that is I want to restore my work area back to the way it was as I was as I was do, finishing the disassembly. Now that these parts are clean. So to do that, I'm going to, hmm, how am I going to do that? This is so risky. I want to keep this kind of rigid, but there's static electricity going on there. Okay, so I want to go into this position and then it doesn't really matter. This, this camera's point of view is not in focus, but I, yeah, maybe I'll throw things there. So that's good. Um, <clears throat> okay, so now I'm referencing what's on my screen. And I'm just going to put things back where they were because it, the other part of the rebuilding will involve looking at the video I made during the disassembly, going backwards and, re, and putting things, trying to put things back where they were, oiling it as we go. And I know that you don't use very much oil. Um, Okay, so this thing goes here. Uh, this thing goes here. This thing goes here. I think this gear is there. This is here. The hands, I put the stem, the, the extra stem and crown there. Barrel gear. Uh, uh, there's already pieces missing there. Uh, anyway, let's do what's here. This gear is here. This gear. Um, this piece, this is also a way to kind of make sure I didn't lose anything. This little lever. Oh, the hairspring. God, where's that thing? It's not called a hairspring, though. Okay, there's a missing part, but let's worry about that in a minute. Um, this thing. Hmm. 
Ugh. Oh, this guy. Where's that pallet fork thing go? It should be at the end, right? This gear goes in, I guess it's 46. This looks like it goes here. And this guy, I think also goes there. I think this goes here. This goes here. Uh, this goes in fifty three, it looks like. And then I'm not sure why this, we'll just put this here with this because we know about this problem. It has to be put back. Um, oh, this thing, I don't know this, I don't know why it's incomplete there. Let's look, uh, I already pulled those out, I guess. Okay, so now I'm trying to figure out what I did with that little spring. Did I, I put it in the small pouch. The small pouch. Okay, so that's all been restored. This thing is finished. We're going to see if that somehow got stuck in here. Yep, there it is. So that was here, I think. Okay. You know, at the beginning, I was uh, I was pretty excited about this, and uh, I know I don't express it very well, but I was like, "This is really cool. I'm really happy about what I'm doing." At this point, I'm I'm not as excited because I feel like I'm a lot closer to the moment that failure is going to come. So it's kind of like, and it's also taking such a long time
Okay, so now, <clears throat> do I have an inventory of everything, kind of? Yeah. Oh, that's my live camera, I'm like. Um, I don't, I don't recognize anything being missing right now, so that's a good thing. Um, okay, so the next problem is, oh, this is just the cleaning video, so I need that. Don't need to save. That's just because I rotated it. Now this, this other video, there's one thing I should look at on YouTube, which is where I'll just do it real quick, where to oil. How to oil. Uh, how to oil mechanical watch. No, just oiling mechanical. watch and then repair because I, I, I what I would do right now is just um, I, I, I would just oil the points where the metal contacts a ruby with the tiniest bit of oil possible the most infinitesimally tiny amount of oil possible and the only thing I'm not sure is if there's any other point that I should oil. This is CloudTech. Cushioning that responds to you. Compressing based on how your foot... Um, so... Oh my god, that is interesting. Holy crap. I just want to watch. I don't want to cheat too much. Like the. The thing to do would be watch this whole video. Um, that's already a huge cheat just to know that when I get to that point, I should see that, that special gear clicking back and forth. Um, but then it's weird, like how, did, how do you get the other gear, the other thing underneath that, the pinion wheel? I guess it just slips in there. If that's called the pinion wheel. I just want to see him oil something. Oil one little crystal. Uh, one little... There. Is that oil? Yeah. Moving on to the keyless work. Ooh, but he's We've putting oil the, on that. And that's maybe not even oil. And the sliding pinion, which I'm lubricating. That might be grease. grease. That's why you need different viscosity. Oh boy. And now the crown wheel. Oh man, gotta be careful now. The crown wheel screw is a reverse threaded screw. Not the main plane. I think I just totally changed to a different video. Yeah. Okay, you know what? I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, the point was to try to do it on my own. <clears throat> 
So that was the end. So, oh, yeah, I guess I could put that on this screen here. So the question is, oops, how come I was going to the beginning? I don't get it. Is that just a single frame? Okay, it is. <clears throat> Okay, so the first thing is that palette fork thing. That's the last thing I removed. Here we go. I think I'm going to orient this the same way in the clamp. Oh, I got to focus the top camera. It's kind of the same, right? Nice and tight. Check the focus. Um, so I believe that there is a, there's a jewel right there. And the, I see. I'm going to get two instances of this going because this is a bigger screen for me. And also I can reference two different frames at the same time. Okay, so that thing, I gotta, okay, it, it has a pin that goes down into a uh, This this palette thing has a pin that goes down into a this jewel doesn't matter because that's for the thing it connects to. I was gonna tape this. Maybe you should do that. Mm. 
uh, this double stick tape, so I need to use a little bit. Uh, is this going to slide around? Yes. You know, in the movie Fight Club, at the beginning, if you rent the video, it, there's a FBI warning about um, copyright violation, and it, it it starts off normal, like all VHS or showing my age, like all um, DVDs, um, and then uh, at the end, it, it shifts into saying like if you're still reading this. You're, and then the filmmaker, Fincher or whoever, the writers, it starts b becoming really offensive, like you're an idiot if you're still reading this. Um, God damn it. So that's kind of like, if you're still watching this video, I feel bad for you. In the 1980s or 90s, there was a movie about the Holocaust called Shoah that was famous for being 12 hours long. So... But it was an actual documentary that, I mean, like, a topic like that deserves a long... Watching somebody un try to unstick double stick tape from the thumb does not deserve a long video. So this is the kind of double stick tape that likes to separate when you try to peel off the... I could, I could take a different approach to this problem of the double stick tape. I could be defeated and I could just use one single side of it. But I refuse to do that. I refuse to let myself be defeated by double stick tape. Okay, now I can't upset the whole apple cart there. So my sense is, the next thing is I have to oil a point, the, 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 I have to oil the point where that pallet fork is going to sit. And that is an insanely, ridiculously tiny,
Okay, video, record. So basically it's gonna sit right there. See, you can see the shimmer off of that um, jewel ruby. There's a little hole in the center of that, right? So the bottom of that palette fork thing pivots in that, I'm kind of shaky. It pivots in that tiny hole. Um, so this is my oil, which it's labeled Watch Fix. I can barely read that. It says watch fix Fane's Eric Saint Trois. Oh, that's funny, I'm speaking French. Hamburg. Uh, watch fix. Okay, so Trois, Trois sounds good. I could have sworn I bought this from China. Guess not. Okay, so uh, I don't know if you can see over there, but I don't want to put that up on the... I have mixed feelings about, oh, I think the tiny, I think the half millimeter, no, that's too big. Let's see how this compares. Um, this is a hypodermic needle the tip of which I, I had, I filed it off. This is a 0.6. This is a 0 .5, 0 0.5 millimeter screwdriver versus hypodermic needle, but it's flattened, so it's no longer got the point versus I'm going to use the blue one of these. This is like a little point for pricking your finger to draw blood. And that point is probably the best for applying a tiny tiny little drop of oil. The problem is it's kind of aggressive, but I'm going to use it on this first one and see what happens. So the first thing to look at is like, does it, does it, does it even hold a drop of oil? And it doesn't really. So I'm going to try, now this thing came with the oil. I suppose I should look at that, but. Jesus, look at that. That is not. And compare that with um, compare that with the hypodermic needle. So 
So I don't know. That's for oiling some kind of clock or something. Um, let me try the half millimeter screwdriver. The problem also is these tips, the, the oil does not want to, doesn't want to form on the tip of these things. I have a feeling I didn't actually dip this in the oil last time. That's, that's, okay, one last try. This is a new hypodermic needle that hasn't been flattened. Same problem. Okay, so one other possibility. So this is what I worry about also like as soon as you squeeze this thing it just starts pouring like back pressure problem So so I can do this. I'm just going to quickly do it. Mm. Too slow. OK. And maybe this thing will calm down, and then I can squeeze it a bit to get the oil to come out. Now I'm going to see if if I can see the oil I just applied. It looks to me like it's on the metal there. I have another light I'm going to turn on for a second. Okay, so then let's see if I can, oh man.
Okay, I'll, I'll pause this. I presume I'll get faster at this. This is like the first one. I can see, I can see there's oil spill right there. But there's also oil on the ruby. So I think that's good. I might need to do some cleanup every time I do this. Now, This thing. I think I'll show you that because it's 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 a key thing. I think I decided that that might be called the pallet fork, but no. It seems like it's in good condition. I'll flip it over, but the, the, the important things seem to be that pin. Oh, it's got a pin on the top and on both ends. So I'm going to have to figure out which side is up. Uh, it should be possible, right? So there's a little pin there. And then if I flip it over, there's a little pin on the bottom. Now, obviously that in the back, there's also um, a third pin that's higher when it's when it's sitting like that. Um, so I suspect it actually sits like this. But I'll look, we'll look at some more references to try to figure that out. <coughs> okay, so the... <coughs> Don't particularly want to spill that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at... Uh, maybe as I lift that off of there, I reveal which side is up and down. <laughs> pause, pause. Uh, can't tell. Oh, I dropped it. Okay, so that's over. Um, I 
I'm going to move this to the bigger screen for a second. Okay, I don't see how to how to identify that. It's also possible that it just won't sit correctly one way or the other. I'm going to try it one way, and then if it doesn't feel right, I'll try it the other way. So I'm going to try it first with the longer, longer pin down. Yeah, because uh, otherwise I think it's going to sit too flat. Oh my god. Hmm. That magnetic screwdriver is really working nicely for me. Kind of not joking because I need something very gentle. Okay, so I'll look at that with the, was my head totally in the shot? I'm very sorry. Uh, I'm trying not to do that, but this takes such concentration. I can't, video. Come on, iPhone. Can do better than that. I think something is tricking its ability to focus. So my feeling is if I did it the other way, so that that short pin that is currently sticking up, if that short pin was sticking down, I think this thing would be bottoming out on the um, the whole the whole power fork thing would be laying on the bottom of the plate because that hole is. Um, seems like it's a little bit recessed into the where that jewel is so i think oh uh, the other thing we can check is the the whatever the piece is that that connects right there so we'll keep an eye on that and but also this thing that see those two pins sticking up like goalposts it seems like it's kind of centered on the middle of those which also seems to make sense would that be the other case no it'd be much lower yeah I th I, Seems right to me. Okay, so the next is um, 
try to figure out what goes on top of that or beside that. So I'm going backwards frame by frame right now. Maybe I gotta go a little faster. Oh, cool. So that's actually the little plate that holds the top of that. So we'll find out pretty quickly. So what we need is that plate, we lay it on there, and then that screw, which we can find here, plate, Oh wait, and screw. And this has these two little positioning rods. Oops. So what did I do with what that I'm screw? Doing I'm removing this little plate. Uh, it should be the last screw. And this has the, you know, I should know what that's six. called. Like a, That's the most famous part of a watch. Okay, this is going in 56. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> so this thing looks positively huge. I think that makes sense. Now, um, I think I think I can oil that from above. So I think I can place it. Is that on there? Ooh. There's a hair. Oh, damn it. Sorry. That's why I, was, I should set up the other camera. There's a hair right there. And then this thing should move back and forth. That seems correct to me. Uh, blocking it again. Okay, so I'm gonna use Radico again to get this screw. Probably gonna have a problem with the magnetized screwdriver again. So the problem is that as soon as I get near this, it lifts the screw. Could go bigger. That's too big. Now, I, I, 
I believe I made sure that that was all seated correctly before putting any pressure on that screw. But if you didn't, if that was wrong and you put pressure, you know, tighten that screw, if that pin was not in the hair-sized hole in that ruby, boom, the crystals, I mean, the, the jewel is, is done. So that's like, I have uh, 21, 24 opportunities to, to do that wrong as I put this thing back together. But that, that seems good to me. We can almost see the, yeah, you can see the, you can see the pin on the top in the ruby. The only thing is, th th this is actually what I worried about, or, or that's one of, I can't tell if that ruby is, is weird or not. I can't tell if it's like cracked or something. Turn this other light on. What the hey? Channel six. Too much reflection. I don't think it's broken. I think it's it just you're just seeing like all this. You're seeing a reflection of that, and that looks like a three way. Um, where's that thing? Those lights kind of make it look like there's some contour to the, the ruby. I don't think there is, as if it's broken. Because I kind of looked at all this before. Okay. <clears throat> so, onward. Why did I flip that thing over? Oh, I think this was on the bottom. No. Okay, that was, that's assembled the way it is now. Oh, I was going to put some oil on it. I'll do that, but let me cue this up. Examining. Oh, I know. Uh, that, 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 okay, that's complicated. So that was because that gear was stuck. I had to flip it upside down. Hmm. Okay. Let's go to the same place here.
So what that was was the yeah this is like a little gear okay first I'm gonna first I'm gonna oil this then I'm gonna flip it over and then there's a little gear that goes on the back of one of these gears and it's a press fit thing and then that gear yeah <clears throat> Okay, I saw a little drop form. Oh, way too much. Okay, I think I managed to draw it back with that. Um. Okay, now technically, I, I'm not gonna do a whole lot of flipping over, so might as well try to do this correctly. Maybe I'll do it on my right hand since I'm right-handed. <clears throat> oh, but the problem is I have to put the gear that this is the, that, that central gear there first and hold it there hmm Radico? I don't know and which way does that gear go and meanwhile I'm going to lose sensation in my finger okay so I'm going to keep this. Okay, so then the this is the gear. Got to figure out top and bottom of that. That is freaking insane. Okay, well anyway, it's obvious what the top and the bottom is. I want to be holding it so it's kind of straight down. That was fun. Now the reason it's obvious, uh, if you can see from this side camera, Um, there's a, there's a gear on the bottom of that. Is that, is that reality there? I think so. Damn. Uh, yeah, so that, that has to sit like that, but oh, and then the thing that goes on it, that caps it is this. Oh, shit. Yeah. 
That's all 55. So I need to get 55 onto that. From the bottom, gear up. And this thing wasn't cleaned because I forgot I had gears in there. I got that one, but this is one gear I forgot. I think I got to clean that um, with something else. Uh, oh, uh, Oh, that's nice. It's, I cannot really imagine how, how I'm going to press that on there without damaging that. Okay, so one thing will help is to know what's in the middle of that hole, which is probably a ruby. Maybe not. I don't think there is a ruby there. But I also don't really get this. I don't really get how that... There's a tiny... That thing clamps onto the tiny tip of that. Is there some other gear I'm forgetting about? Hmm. Okay, so... <clears throat> so what, the way it works is that this gear... This gear goes on top, facing down as in the orientation now. See that gear on the side there? That 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 flips and goes down on this from this point of view, and then this comes up from below and press fits onto the tip tip of that, which is I don't see how enough of that is sticking through there to press fit onto. But that's definitely, that's definitely what the deal was. So I guess I just have to trust it. But the, um, it sure looks like the plate thickness is too thick there for that. Okay, oh wait, uh, that's something else, right? That's, that gear is way back there. Um, <clears throat> So I think I have to properly clean this anyway, and then I have to oil that spot because there's no ruby there. So I don't really know how to properly clean it except for to get this thing going again. <clears throat> and I wouldn't exactly call that properly cleaning it either.
Okay, so there's something else we're going to do here. Um, so this guy, let me put that in the... This is already clean. This is going in the cleaner. And to top things off, I I'm going to make sure I clean everything, clean these gears, B because otherwise uh, I, 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 I will have taken a shortcut, which I can't accept. So <clears throat> on this guy, We've got a screw right here. That was kind of loose. I wonder if that was loosened up by the... Uh... Ultrasonic. Now that screw I'm going to put in whatever that is there. Wow. And then there's a little plate here. Oh, that plate has a gear stuck on the bottom of it. Okay, this is important. See that? I don't think that, that that gear is supposed to be free to move, but it's just kind of stuck. Maybe it's an assembly. Let's see. Can you see that? No. That gear might be some, some kind of assembly. But you know what? We'll put this in the... We'll put this in here and we'll find out. Hmm. Is that right? Do we want to do that? It sure looks like it's it's an assembly, but why would that how would that turn in there? Oh, I know what it is. It's actually sitting on a pin that's the, the assembly is the pin, but not the gear. Ugh. Okay, I'm just trying to get that in the shot of the overhead close-up. It's probably not in focus, but I can see it well enough to see what's going on. So my guess is, yeah, that gear dropped off like that. Now, does that gear have a top and a bottom? This would be the top, if it does, and this would be the bottom. Top. bottom side view I don't see any difference in that gear top and bottom so that gear ultimately goes on that that thing and then that thing goes face down right there. This thing goes face down right there with that gear in this spot. And then this gear has a screw. So that gear has a little tiny screw like that. That's going to go in. This is 113.
And this gear does have a top and a bottom. And it, it, the, 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 the top has a recess in it. Okay, so we don't think this gear has a top and a bottom. This thing just goes, gets cleaned. This gear does have a top and a bottom. And as I said, the top has a, I'll remember that because I'm going to clean this and immediately reassemble it. I think you can see this gear. Okay, anyway. Um, okay, so that's ready. Now this This is the screw that is the sorry. This is the screw that is the stem release. All I know about that is they always say don't take that all the way out. And now we can look at why. It 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 wants to wants to be free in this direction. But it doesn't want to come out. And it doesn't want to go out the other direction either. So we're going to consider that that is kind of fixed in there. And then there's one other plate here which has a screw. And I, I don't really understand what this is. So this is Is that gosh. Um <clears throat> the screw is here. This this squiggle, it seems like a really powerful spring or something. And then there's a gap here. But it's pretty obvious if I unscrew this, this thing will come off. And perhaps that's just there to be able to replace this, to hold that center pin, pinion thing in place. I don't understand that kind of spring-like shape to it. But in the spirit of taking everything apart, I think I gotta take it apart. Is there anything fragile on the bottom of this thing? Not really. Okay, so we're gonna No. 
I'm like six hours into my watch making video. No, I'm putting I'm putting it back together now. It's insane. No, it doesn't matter <laughs> at this point. Six hours and five minutes. Mm -hmm. I'm only one hour and 30 minutes into this chapter. Twelve. No, twelve hours. Probably, I don't know. Probably not today. It's turning out to be slower putting it back together than it was taking it apart. Probably, yeah. If you're trying to do it right. How's it going for you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you take a nap and then pretend like you just were out to lunch or something? Yeah, like if if you're if it's really like weird, like I mean, if you're done and it's one a.m., but don't, I, I'll probably work on this until one a.m. So, yeah, yeah, I'm happy. All right, um, talk to you later. Love you. Bye. Uh. <clears throat> Okay, so now we get to find out that's the screw, and that screw is going to go into one twelve, I think. And then let's see what this is all about. The real question here is like, not does it need to be cleaned? Is there something about this that needs cleaning? There's a there's a kind of pry point, which I'm suspicious of. Um, I think you can see it here. It looks like you could get the tip of a screwdriver in that little crack right there and pry. But why? what's it what's it pried against and how how what's involved in do you need a press to put this thing back together because there's some spring power there that i don't understand i'm gonna take my chances and pry it and there you go oh interesting so that whole thing is that whole, let's call it a pinion, axle, whatever, that thing is mounted on a spring. And then there's there's two pins on the bottom of this, I presume, because I see two holes there. Yeah, three pins. So that those pins stabilize this plate on there. And that spring is there so that you have that much spring action on that piece which seems to me to be zero spring action if that's stainless steel like pretty pointless but there's some reason for it um maybe 
in some setting operation or something that that thing has to flex because that something else pushes it back and it disengages a gear temporarily or something like that. <clears throat> okay, so this part is kind of robust and this part is kind of robust. I think these can just go in the cleaner again since they're separated now. Like I said, this, this does not need to be cleaned. And these parts do need to be cleaned. And then I'll reassemble this as soon as I'm done with the cleaning. I still have a huge problem, which is how to how to press those gears back together. Um, maybe just just get that thing out of the movement holder, place the bottom gear on the mat, and then just kind of stack it and then press down. Um, and then oil, uh, maybe I should oil it before I do that. I'm going to need the water. I need a staging area for when it's soapy. And there's a lot of soapy water in the I should talk about some something uh, just to keep this from getting so boring, but I don't know. I don't know how noisy that is. <clears throat> Probably not that bad. Um, can I see? I can see a mic. Check, check. Seems kind of noisy on the record levels on that screen. In order for this to sync up, I have to speak. And I don't know if it'll sync up because I don't know if, yeah, it should. I think you'll hear my voice. Okay, anyway, that's my work area. There's a quote from uh, Carl Jung on the teleprompter, which I didn't really use the teleprompter, but I sh a few hours ago I showed the Carl Jung clip and I was ready to kind of quote from it. Okay, so should be back in business, but the um, 
These guys have to be rinsed. That's why I put that piece of paper there, because I dropped that. Okay. <clears throat> Try to make sure no screws, yeah, no secret screw escape. I have to dump that water, soapy water.
Okay, I uh, can speak again. Um, Wow, that's tiny. There's some tiny stuff. I guess I knew that was going on, but. Um, I don't know if I can get this where you can see it. Basically, oh, that's our I'm not sure the ultrasonic cleaner is working so well with this inside this metal thing. But basically, before I forget what I'm doing, we're, I'm going to re re reverse. Okay, but I want to do, sorry, I want to. couple things I'm concerned about. One is that this is a moving part. It seems to have some wear or some... Sorry about the head. I just want to rub that with Radico. Okay, so anyway, hard to say. Oh, there's still some water there. Okay, so reversing that process. Um, this guy goes here. It's got those, and this is our bottom gear. It's got those positioning pins and then we use this screw, which I'm going to use Rodico to grab. And then in terms of torque, 
I have a sense from disassembling that mm. how much torque there was. So that seems right. And then these gears are going to need some oil. I think they're not, I think these are setting gears, so it's no, not a big deal. Uh, what else needed oil? This guy's going to need some oil. Okay, so then... Uh, uh, <clears throat> my recollection is that this gear was like that. This gear doesn't matter which way it is, but it goes on there. That needs a touch of oil. That flips over on that. Now, one thing that's weird, nothing is holding that gear on. Is that gear correct? Oh, there was a screw that held that gear on. Duh. Okay. So the gear screw. I should have used Rodico for that. Okay, one thing that's one thing I'm starting to feel now that I'm getting a bit into putting it back together is that this is doable if you have the instructions which i'm sure that i could find if i look for it i think they used to write down the steps for all these watch movements but the um the problem for me is that you you, you need to know what the names of things are I'm sure they use pictures too, though. But the point I wanted to make is that it, it, it does seem it does seem doable. Radico. So uh, I, I fully don't expect it to work. I, I expect to run into some problems still with, when you're pulling it apart, it's easy to kind of pull gears out. When you're putting it back, and also to, when you're putting it back, lining up the, the jewels, that's a big thing I'm afraid of. I'm also happy to be practicing with this little setting mechanism right now because there are no jewels involved here.
Okay, so that's back together. And then my idea about this is to remove it And somehow, oh, maybe I need a special way of doing that. Somehow I need to set this gear. Like that. Can you see that? It's at the top of the frame. I need a little jig to hold that. Excuse my head. Hmm. So this is this is unorthodox, but basically I need something to hold this thing vertical. There's nothing fragile in this plate, so I can use it. The only problem is I need to make sure that the gear goes that direction. But basically my idea is to put this Put this gear on there and drop that onto that and then press down and then lift off and, and this, this little thing is just using it to hold that vertical like that. But the um, first I need to make sure that, the, that that's the way that gear goes. So I can kind of see it here, but it's not very sharp. Um, oops. Oh, I just pushed it there and what happened? I'm going backwards, right? I got a sneeze. Oh man, that's the sneeze. Let's skip that. It looks down. It looks like the gear part is down. It's got to be. Okay. So, <clears throat> gear's up in this because it's down from the other point of view. And then. So I'm just trying to get this where you can see. I'm trying to dro drop this from there. And now I'm going to try to drop this onto this. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
That's crazy. Let's try a different approach here, which is to line this up first. trying to see if this works better. Why not just flip this over? And then try to align this I mean, yeah, that's fine. In theory, this might work. I'm really curious how much that thing st sticks out. I feel like it doesn't stick out. That's the thing I don't understand. It's also like there's no jewel there, but there should be. And it's not long enough. It seems like it's not long enough to actually stick into that gear. Let me see if I'm making a dumb mistake right now. I'm going to play this little section. This is just like sitting loosely in there the way you just saw it was. So that, I don't know, like that's going to have to fit into, there's a top and a bottom and there's a pin, there's a pin on the top here in terms of orientation. Okay, so this little gear, this tiny little gear, that's crazy. Um, this is the part that doesn't, doesn't want to disassemble. Mm. 
Uh, there's a problem here. I don't understand. There's a gear missing. That's a disaster. So this little gear is not the right gear. Right? Because there's a that gear is there. So, so what I mean is that I thought that the gear I had I'm using is this gear, but I'm actually it's this gear. There's three of those gears. And this one is the larger one, and it's not present. So that's why I'm having a hard time with this. This guy is just goes with that. There's a gear missing. And I shudder to think what has happened to it at this point. If we watch the video, we can watch where I put it, but... It's probably on the floor. Okay, so we're down to... Damaged. I gotta sneeze. Okay, that's what I thought. It just you just have to pull on that thing. So that's a press fit. Okay, um, so just to keep track and of it. And I'm gonna put that in fifty five. Fifty five. And then I'm assuming that yeah, now I'm sure that other gear will slip out, probably fall. So yeah. where'd that go? Ooh, there's two of them. Oh wait. Oh uh, one two. is the Oh. Okay, I wanna go back to plastic. Oh yeah, look at that thing. This guy. Oh man, that. This guy. Okay, that sucks. Okay, here's the problem. Sleeve, gear, who kn I, I, Okay, I would like the easy solution. The big problem, before I start crawling around on the floor, because that's only going to lead to heartache, because it will have been smashed already, I'm going to try to follow the video. Could that have happened recently? Uh, okay, we're going to just follow this video. So. We're looking, we're trying to keep an eye on this gear, but this video is almost over. Okay, so if I, I just need to move this to a screen where it's a little bit bigger. I think it's it's still there, but I'm gonna back up here. It probably got stuck on my sweater when I turned off the computer last night or the night I did it. I'm going backwards. there. Uh, 
there. Okay, wait, I just gotta memorize exactly where that is. Damn it. It's there. So then, <clears throat> is this, th th that's the actual, that's the playback thing. Camera five today, that's not it, because I moved everything. That's the cleaning. See, it's gone here. Well, if I'm lucky, The problem is, if that got stepped on or anything like that, forget about it. So what happened, um, I'm going to look at, it never made it from, I don't know when I moved the the stuff from the gray into the blue. I thought I was doing everything on video. a video of and uh
structure. I'm just reviewing how this started today. Okay, so uh, it's been a few days. I made the, the first half of this video the last three hours on uh, Friday, and today's Tuesday. Um, and I'm gonna, today I'm gonna clean. Okay, so I need to look at the camera that has a view back. Can't really see it in this shot. So it's that iPhone shot. The first iPhone shot today. Okay, so here's the See, this is where it should be, but it's hard to tell if it's there or not. Ooh. And is it really gone? So there I am loading those things. So I'm loading the, that's the blue video, the blue thing. Okay, so that's this video. Right, because I, I did that, and then I explained what I'm gonna do. Oh, I cleaned the case. I, I looked, I experimented with those, that tiny ruby. And then I think I started bringing things over from From the other side. Big pieces first. Oh, who knows what's in that little... Okay. There's the big cleaning thing. Oh, I kind of remember that. I think there's no big gear at that point. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm just thinking 
moving it over I know what I know it got caught on the sweater the sweater look uh Oh, well, maybe not. Transport over here, disappear. Could it just be carrying that? It just. How much this this was there until I was ready to start it was here and if I knocked it okay so let's follow two two scenarios This, this thing should be pretty easy to spot. It's not like it's that tiny. So scenario one, it falls in this area. Because it gets caught in my sweater here. The problem with caught in the sweater you know what that means. But anyway if it, if it, it gets caught here and then it just drops anywhere in the world, that's the problem. It, 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 it's perfectly fitting that it's such an idiotic thing. Such an idiotic mistake. I could have predicted that, that, that the, 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 the reason I couldn't do this would be because of dumb mistake. Um, I guess the other thing would be to figure out what that thing is called and um, try to find it as a part. Can't believe I did that. It, 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 it's really pretty obvious to me that 
would have happened in the... The sweater and then... Carried away and then I'll find it somewhere someday. Okay, so the idea here is you can see... Okay, so at that point it's already gone. And I, I don't think it disappeared in this... Again, if we look at um, iPhone movie... It should be in one of these bins. Unless I took it first thing with the with the rotor, but I don't think I did.
I should be able to see when I pulled those pieces. So I started bringing pieces from over there and I brought the rotor. Oh, the other thing I realized is that I'm not going to clean those screws. Like, I was like, how do you clean the screws and then figure out which screw goes where from that numbering system I have? So the answer is don't clean the screws because the screws are just screwed. They're, they're tiny. They're, they might carry a tiny bit of oil back into the case or whatever, but I don't see why that matters. Um, and I kind of wanted to, I think we kind of looked at this yesterday. Basically, there's a tiny bit of grime on some of these. Um, sorry, I'm spacing out. Um, Jewels. There's a, there's, a, there's a little bit of grime on them. Um, the first question will be, I think I'll put this on 30 blocks for this part. Um, because I'm worried that these jewels will rattle out of the, if the jewels rattle out of the, whatever this is called, the, 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 the watch plate, or whatever the main plate, then it's over, uh, essentially. That's why I was, I was looking at that video about, I didn't get to the point actually where you show this, but you have to have tools to it. Oh yeah, it's burning shit. Anyway, you have to have tools to press those those jewels back in there. So let's see. I guess we'll try. I hate to do this. Like wait, put this in and wait three minutes. Okay, so I'm just gonna put all all the pieces in there. Oh shit! There's one thing I wanted to point out. This. Oh, I know. I can show you. There's a. The proper thing to do would be to remove that jewel. I guess I have to do that. <sighs> okay, so it's just gone. It, 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 it's sometime over the course of the weekend. Perhaps a demon came and took it. When I was shutting down, my sweater snagged it. I walked away and it dropped off somewhere. That is like 100% what happened. And the miracle is if I find it and if it's not damaged. The one thing about lost objects is that they are usually, the, the vast majority of the times, 
you eventually find them very proximate to where they were lost. They were just not so easy to see. So the thing is also, if I came over, turned on that computer, then messed around with other stuff. Okay, so the only thing is I'm not willing to give up that easily. Um, so the next step is going to be to, to look for that part, replacement part. Mother fricker. I should try to make sure I'm not missing anything else. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this. Uh, that's back where it needs to be. I'm missing that gear. I've, I've replaced that stuff um, on, on that thing. I'm just reviewing. I'm going to put that there, that there. I'm going to come back to this with a solution, which would probably be like ordering the part. I have to figure out what that part name is and, and try to find a worst case scenario by a non-working Cal 44. And, um, and I can get that part. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, because I, I can't take it out of that, obviously. What a, of course, of course I do that. Of course I did that. Okay, so the thing I want to do though is I want to, I promised this. So before I end this video, I'm going to check out this watch and tell you a little bit about that project. It's kind of exciting because that makes up for losing the, uh, the part. I get to move on with my plan. So this, I paid 39 francs, which is about $44, if it's what I think it is. No, no, this is some, what, no, this is what I think it is. What's this guy doing? 
they probably go. So this is probably. What the hell is <laughs> And then I cannot do this like this. I have all these screws there. I can't be so reckless. This looks nothing like what I've expected. I don't think it's the right watch. What the hell is going on? This is not the right fucking watch, moron. Damn it. Okay, so totally wrong. I always thought it'd be funny actually with this. These, I've seen these this brand before. It's called uh, Rennes. So I thought it's perfectly timed actually to look like it says penis or something that's sound, that spelled the same way as penis. So I thought it'd be funny to like modify it to say penis. But the um, this is not the watch. So and I don't really particularly want this watch either. Damn it. Such a big disappointment of a day, I'll tell you. Unbelievable. Disaster on disaster. Okay, so I'm going to tell this guy that he sent the wrong watch. And look for the spare part. So that's life in the slow lane. And that's it for now. Okay, so I'm back and um, it's now day three of this uh, process. Uh, started on Friday, took Saturday, Sunday, Monday off. Yesterday I started reassembly and then I lost, uh, I realized I'd lost uh, a gear. And so today, uh, yesterday I found the gear after I turned off the video. So uh, today is the third day, it's Wednesday and I'm back to try to move forward. Um, the first thing, because the losing it was uh, such a mystery, I'll, I'll just show you. So it's the larger wheel there with the longer axle or whatever shaft that was lost. And the place where I found it ultimately was right down in this, right down in this area. So luckily, it seems like I didn't step on it. 
Um, because it, it seems to be straight. And then, ironically, I put it back here and then I did some more stuff and then it was gone again. <laughs> again. So I was like, not very happy. But then the second time I found it right down in the wire right there. So again, it wasn't stepped on, but I was like, damn, you are one stupid motherfucker. So, uh, it'll probably happen again. <clears throat> I think it's a good idea to mitigate against, uh, that kind of thing happening as best you can. But the numbering system seems to be working. I mean, Imagine if, if this thing got flipped and all the screws were out of their numbered positions. Forget it. Um, okay, so that's that. And then, um, did I? Let me just check something. I have a tendency to forget to actually record. Okay, I did actually record. Um, So I've queued up the video to this place where it gets interesting. Well, this is kind of where we are. So interesting or not, this is where we are. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to use this just yet. Um, oh, I really want to change those videos. I, I think I got, I got to do that. Um, I'm going to pause and come back because I want to, this, this super close up, there's a big monitor here. I want to see it on the big monitor because when I focus, it's too hard to see it on a small monitor. And the, the camera that's on the big monitor right now is autofocus anyway. So... Interestingly, it needs aiming also, but okay. So, uh, this will be a short one and then I'll come back. So now I'm going to press five and they should all do their thing. It's fun to watch that one. It automatically zooms in. This is a camera that's up there at the very top. Um, and it has a motorized zoom that automatically zooms in when it starts up. Oh, this is upside down. Okay. So there's a couple other things. I just switched these two monitors and this monitor is mounted upside down because this camera is upside, was, is upside down and that was the camera going there. So now this, what I want to do was have it so when I focus this camera right here, I can see it on that big screen, which does make it easier to get good focus there. But the problem is now it's always going to be backwards because you can't flip the image on the input of that big screen. But on this little one, I flipped it just by flipping over the, the screen itself. So I'll deal with that later. I'll probably get used to that. But now, Everything should be recording. Um, yeah, so we can go back to. <laughs> oh my God. I wonder how long that was and also how I'll do the multicam editing with all these shutdown and restart. I think I know how to handle that. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm back. I'm going to pretend because I think I'll probably cut all that out. Um, so I'm going to pretend like that didn't just happen. But you know if you just watched it. But I, I want to be able to edit either way because um, 
in 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 one way uh this is all part of reality of of doing this on in another way this that was kind of extracurricular activity so i'm back um it's day three of this project and i found the gear last night um the missing gear it was on the floor down here and then I put it back and then I did some more stuff and then it was missing again and then it ended up under the desk but somehow um, Jesus this th this is the gear and it seems to me that it's not um, damaged so I got lucky, it rolled out of the tra trajectory of my feet both times. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the plan now is to continue with this. And on this screen, I have uh, a screen capture of kind of at this stage Oh, there's another thing I did. Oh, there's two. Okay. Another thing I did last night when I found the gear was I cleaned it because uh, there's no reason to do another video with another six minutes of cleaning and rinsing. So I cleaned this gear. Mother... I got... <clears throat> I don't know if you just saw that, but just like every time the tweezer gets a little bit crazy, um, every time you squeeze something with the tweezer, it just it's like a slingshot action uh, um, okay so this gear this 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 gear goes face down in this hole and then you can see it has a gear on it that's going to interface with probably the I don't know we'll find out as we go backwards in the video but um, it's going to go down and then also you can see the in this picture the um that special gear that interfaces with the pallet fork is uh it's in place too I, I so i don't know if that should go in i might stick that in there also but let's put this i think i put oil in that center hole yesterday too so now the point about this, the whole reason I discovered this gear was missing yesterday was because there's the the, the other one looks quite a bit like it, but the um, center shaft is not nearly as long. So I was like, well, that's not long enough to attach the other thing on the other side. So Okay, I need some magnification. Um, I'm kind of exasperated right now at how difficult this all is. Okay, so that that the the the, sh the center shaft on that is long enough that it's hitting it's already hitting the rubber. And by the way, I know this workspace looks so dirty because of the cameras and it is dirty or there wouldn't you wouldn't see dirt, but um it's not a particularly dusty environment. It's just like when when you get into the ultra close up world, you see the reality of uh, dust, and that's another thing like um, watchmakers have to deal with that I'm not particularly prepared for. Okay, so now. I don't really have a plan for how to get the the bottom gear on this safely. Oh, let me get that in the camera. 
I put, I, I, it's higher now, so I need to refocus this. Um, I think I'll just take a look. Part of what happens here is you just learn as you go. That's the whole point. So this gear interfaces with that palette fork. Did I lose focus on that screen? Oh, it's just... This is like microscope territory again. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to turn this towards me. Oh, that's better contrast. Now see the... I don't know how to... I don't know if I... If I seat this right now, if I try to seat this gear in the um, jewel, first of all, I didn't lubricate that jewel yet. And then also, I can't flip it. Oh, I can't flip this assembly over to attach the. There's this little thing. I need to attach that on the bottom of this gear because that's a press fit thing. Let me try to get this camera getting a decent view also. Um, as I was saying, there's kind of no reason to try to press fit this thing, or sorry. I gotta use. There's no reason to seat that in the jewel right now because it'll it'll fall. Um, oh, I know what I can do. Uh, I don't know if this is a good idea, but I can use Radico. To gently hold that gear in place. One thing, of course, real watchmakers have tools to do a lot of these things. Um, so my plan is, the main thing I want to do is get that tiny gear onto the back of that center gear. I did already lubricate that center hole. I want to very gently support this from below. Focus is not going to work out right now. Sorry about that. Uh, wide shot should be okay for this. Let's see, can you see it? Hmm. How can I get that camera? Oh, that camera won't focus because I went to telephoto. Okay. Now. I want to try to get this on there. Okay. Now I want to press fit it. I think that worked. Let 
Oh, I just used a finger that was not gloved. Um, so, oh, what the hell? Oh, I'm looking. <laughs> I'm looking at the screen with the with the playback on my laptop, and I'm like, what the hell? The palette gear is there, but I thought I was looking at the live view of this camera. But so obviously the, the palette gear is not there right now. Um, but this gear is, and it's it's properly retained on the bottom by the press fit of that other gear. <clears throat> so now we're going to go, let me do it here, backwards. I just want to watch this part. I got to do it on this screen though, so I can cut to it for full screen. Might as well watch this whole bit right here. I was thinking about this video and because it's already like s six hours long or something, five, four, I don't know, more than four. Um, I'll do a cut down. I'll do a cut down to this that's like 10 minutes long and then I'll also post this insane because the cut, like I was saying in the hour two or something, it'd be funny to pretend like I did all this. So I'll do a cut down that just shows how I did it, a normal YouTube video, but I'll also post this for people that want to see the evidence and also to see the suffering and the time it went into it. And of course I don't have to talk so much, but if I don't talk, uh, you don't know what's going through my mind or, or why I'm taking so long. Okay. Pull these parts out and, and I want to have a record of how to, what the details of them so I could have some chance of putting them back together again. Okay, so now I think I'll use, I want to show where I'm putting things. So that won't come out, that's funny. I can't figure that out. Oh, uh, there's the, mm. give up. It's not going to come out. Uh, gosh. Oh, okay. that's interesting. I think this is the spring, like the, maybe that's why it shot. That's not the hairspring, but the barrel. I don't know what's going on. This guy doesn't want to come up. I want to force that, but it seems like that's got to come out at some point. Oh, these guys are coming out. Put that there. And this, this guy, the gear is on top on this and the gear is on top on this too. Gear on top here. Um, Getting down there. Okay, I kind of see what I have to do. Um, this is kind of a good frame. So the thing I didn't talk about yet is these um, setting gears or whatever they are.
Okay, so <clears throat> I, I guess I'm ready to do this uh, oil. So I think I'm going to need oil. Oh, wait, I think I see dust. Um, <clears throat> I think I'm going to need oil here. The reason I'm holding my hand here is because if suddenly there's a, you know how rubber there, so there's already a drop. It's kind of big. Um, I'm going to need a paper towel to deal with this. See, as soon as you give it any pushing, it like shifts from not wanting to come out to just like a, a flow. So now that's too much. You can see that drop, huge droplet. <sighs> see that? But maybe we got this into a, a mode where it will. I saw a tiny drop starting to form. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wait, that's way too much, but I can absorb that. Now, I guess other points, I'm going to try to absorb a little bit of oil off of this, but I think as soon as I touch that, it'll all go. I think we want a tiny bit on each of these. I, I would imagine it's good to have a tiny bit on there. Um, what other? Oh, and then maybe no. I think the winding gear. Oh, wow, that's totally missing. How is what's going to hold that in place? Hmm. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm kind of curious before I go there. Um, well, we got this. Going to need that in this area. And then we're going to need this. Oh, that's the barrel. 
I'm going to go in here. Um, this guy. That seems right. Um, the stacking is, of this is the big one first, and it's on top of the gear I just placed. And then the small one with its gear on top. And the base for that is that crystal, which I don't think I, I, I put any glue on. <laughs> glue. <laughs> oh, wait, it's super glue. Oil. And um, maybe time to take a look at this with the iPhone. Um, Ostensibly, I, I, I thought it might be interesting to see if, if I actually put any oil on that jewel right there. It's kind of hard to tell. But otherwise, that stacking all looks correct. It looks like there might be some dust on top of that gear, the barrel spring gear, so I'm going to try to clean that off. I'll put in the, I'll check that, that jewel for oil. Oh, I know, I can turn on my, this is a super bright light. That does not seem to help a whole lot. I can't really see. I don't believe there's oil there. Okay, so I'm going to stop that. But anyway, we'll try another dot of oil before we place that center gold gear. I can kind of tell that's already too much oil. I think that's something. A few atoms. And then I was going to clean the top of that barrel gear.
That's a joke. No, sorry, that's not a joke. That is. Did I just do that? As in. Okay. I can't. I can't. Uh, oh, boy. No, so that's not in the. It's got some drive power. Um, maybe I got to put this first. Nice. God damn it. It's amazing if I, when I was disassembling this, I was not taking it nearly as seriously as I am now. So it's kind of amazing that, I mean, it'll be a miracle if I didn't damage something that I can't see that damage right now. I don't have the tools to see that damage right now. as in microscope, but <sighs> this Radico stuff is not that sticky, but suddenly, you know, when I put this gear in the cleaner, it floated. I understand what wants to happen here. Ugh. I think that it just happened. So, you know, basically that's what you want. <laughs> Now, how we get these other, that seems seeded up very easily. It's like um, this game Mikado, or like, I forget what it's called in English, but it's like, um, you try to remove the sticks one at a time without knocking everything down. So it's like, Basically, the the the, <clears throat> the gear is not see, the gear has to seat in the in the jewel. Ah, just did it. 
Okay, so I think they're all seated, including that pallet fork gear. The problem is, and this, the problem is this, this winding gear thing, and I don't see how that, it's right here. I don't see how that stays in there. there there's, I feel like I'm missing, um, missing something, but I see in this image that that's there. And the, the reason I'm concerned about that is I know that I'm going to put some kind of plate on that. All the jewels at the top have to be lubricated and have to match these positions. And I have to place that without shaking this stuff. And I think that that winding gear assembly has to be there at the same time. So I have a few concerns about that. <clears throat> so let's watch this again. Super cool, but how the hell Okay, we gotta get the iPhone going again. <laughs> um. The important thing here is to have some imagery of this that I can refer back to when I try to reassemble it. Oh, there's that, uh, there's the, <laughs> trying to can point with my finger. This is that weird, I mean, this is that gear around the, uh, the stem. And I, I didn't even look at what's going on in, in here. That's a whole like little event, mini adventure in itself. But right now I want to pull these parts out and and I want to have a record. Okay, so the thing is, I want to go back and see what plate it was that I lifted that revealed all that. Because that's what's going on next. And that takes a larger screwdriver. I think I went back um, too far. This gear is, is, is over whatever it is there that wants to come up. So this, this, this little thing came from here. So that's going to go into Fifty-three. And then the little gear underneath is the gear that that was... This is that gear. Oh, and I saw when I was looking at it, it has this square... I'm not sure which, the, which is the top and which is the bottom. Uh, it has this interesting square thing going on. I'm going to have to look at the video to try to see. There, there's an inset here. Um, that I have to look at the video to see which, which way that gear goes. So that gear is going up here. So this is this gear. Oh, wait, this is complicated. This gear, and I'm not sure I have it oriented correctly up and down because it flipped over and popped out. And I'm putting that up here. Now, 
when that when that popped up, the reason it popped is because that I was trying to remove this plate. Anyway, um, when that popped up, I heard, I heard something go, and and I think it's just that gear, but there could be other little parts. So I already investigated this, and there, I don't believe there are other little parts. There's still the mystery of hairspring. <clears throat> okay, I don't really want to watch myself crawl around on the floor. I don't think there's anything. I did not specifically hear anything go to that level, so I'm gonna assume that we're still okay in terms of that. So now I got this whole oh. assembly. That was it. Okay, so I just wanna go. Yeah, so the only thing is that was still on there. See, I don't think I put that on now. I have to put I have to put this on. Assembly. You can see that. And then I think I got this whole assembly. Okay, they're kind of the same. Now the other thing is that gear with the square hole. Okay, so let me just kind of say what I think has to happen now. I think this goes Oh wait, um... Just want to check... Yeah, so this goes... Something like that. But it's not seated yet, and I have to be careful it doesn't disrupt everything else.
think that's that, but I need to figure out which screws. Did I miss a gear under there or something? Hmm. I don't think so. You know what I'm still worried about though is what? How does this thing? I don't understand what holds these gears in that. The stem goes in there in the end, but before the stem What the hell holds them there? I'll just focus on that for a second. So This little assembly here goes in here, but I don't see why it would why it would just sit there and not fall. I also don't see what it interfaces with. Okay, change the focus back. Um, I, I think just to confirm well I could screw that plate on I don't see how that matters but what I wanted to do is just confirm that this gear won't sit there it'll just fall through yeah And what about this gear? It also just falls through. Um, so the question is, I, I, I need to look at the 
I need to watch the video very carefully for what's going on there. So now I got this whole assembly. You can see that. And then I think I got this whole assembly. Put that there. And now I'm down into this area. <clears throat> Super cool, but how the hell? Okay, we gotta get the iPhone going again. <laughs> Um, okay, the problem is Oh, baby, is there something on the bottom? Oh, there's a gear. Uh, that gear has to interface. Okay, I see what it is. Okay, so there's a gear right here that is holding that back, but um, I, I suppose I'll find that gear in a moment. Right? No, no, that's not a gear. That's just free space. I thought that was a gear, but I think that's just open space. Yeah, that's just open space. Okay, so then I have a theory that, that that gear was being held in place by um, grease. It just, I just didn't knock it down. But somehow it has to be placed later. It has to be dropped in there once it's, once it's flipped over. And then the, there'll be some kind of plate on the bottom or, or the gear it interfaces with on the bottom or something that will hold it there. So the reason it's floating to... there is just an anomaly based on grease. When I try to reassemble it. Oh, there's that. Uh, there's the... <laughs> I can't point with my finger. This is that weird... I mean, this is that gear around the, uh, the stem. And I, I didn't even look at what's going on in Although that's in here. weird. How can I touch that and it moves and it doesn't fall? Okay, it's a little bit of a mystery. I think I'm going to just have to, I have to figure out where those screws go and get this, this plate screwed down and if I have to undo that later I just have to undo it later
You know what? I want to look at what's on the bottom. Maybe I forgot. Maybe there's something I have to put on the bottom first. That was the part that was in that stem thing. It sits down in there, and I just dropped it into this bin, and it fell apart like that. I think I'll figure out how to put it back together. Uh, but that's just FYI. Okay, now we're kind of getting down to the nitty gritty. I think I have to flip this thing over and see if that center gear has something crusted on the other side that doesn't want to release it. But when I do that, it So what the, f what is that? I don't understand. I don't even see that. So like, if you look at Look at this. Open thing here. And then look at this. It's like a piece broke off, but it's probably from coming up from the bottom or something, but I don't understand. Yeah, we got some stuff going on under here. Ah, okay. Yeah, there's a lot of lot going on the bottom there. There's all kinds of stuff going on the bottom. So the question now is, can I secure the top before I go back and do the bottom? But what stage was I at when I did do the bottom? Yeah, so do I need to do the bottom first? I don't know how I missed that. It's quite possible that it doesn't matter, and it's possible I did it in the wrong order anyway. So um, my feeling is I can go ahead and secure the top. Wait, no, I can't. 
Yeah, I can. Because that gear can drop in. These gears, these are the big question for me. And I think they can drop in from either side. Um... There's a question of like, am I being over eager by placing this and then placing that assembly on there? And I, I, I don't think it matters. Um, top, bottom. I don't see why it matters. I'll find out. Um, okay, so then... What I want to do is go back to where those screws came out and find out what screws those were. Jeez, I think I don't think I broke that. That's weird. That's brand new plastic tweezer and it's killed already. Oh wait, I did. I stuck it under the movement. Um, I think I was trying to do some prying. So nothing's really budging from those two screws. So I could have, I could have to remove the top of this first. Oh, I just wish there was a way. They, they, they probably designed it so you don't have to, you could do a repair without complete disassembly. So let's work our way around the edge here. Okay, so that's, that's, that's this, that's that screw. Screw. You would think that you could remove that if, if the automatic movement is. Working, you would think they would design it so you can remove that. So that's 44. And I guess the next one would be 45. Wouldn't they design the watch so you can remove the automatic movement and replace something else without complete disassembly? That's not what my plan was either because I think I'm doing a complete disassembly, but Oh, so back to the pleasure of, of doing this right now. Um, I'm in. I'm in the zone. I failed to announce, but I'm sure that was forty five. <clears throat>
Oh boy. You kidding me? God. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to have that same problem with the magnetism. I have demagnetizers, but that would be too easy. You know what you also don't want to do with these screws is cross thread. And also, I don't want to do anything where a screw is providing additional leverage, you know, because that's like, if anything's misaligned, so that, that, I can see the side of this right here, there's contact between these two plates I'm attaching without any pressure just came you know came down to contact and same with this side contact no no resistance on the screws part and I think that's really important because any resistance means you did something wrong Now I'm worried about, remember at the beginning, if I didn't have this tight enough, the whole movement could flip from pressure of putting, you know, downward pressure right here. And I do not want to flip it right now. That bit is like too wide, I guess. 0.8, go back to 0.6. Okay. <clears throat> now I have some concern about That gear did not feel like it was properly seated. Perhaps, you know, just from the vibration.
But the question really is like, is that focus for you? Yeah. Those three gears and the plate that, that secures them, to know that they are fixed um, in place correctly would be a big relief. Because that whole relationship, basically of those four gears right there, one, two, three, four, That's like, um, that's four gears, four jewels on top of them. Pretty important relationships between those things there. That I can't really do anything until that's fixed. I'm kind of not in the, I'm not feeling it right now. I feel like I'm insane. I gotta, I gotta sit back and appreciate where I am right now. I feel like it's insane to spend this much time doing this. Um, I also feel like there's, there's like a goal that may be reachable. I should just shut up and keep going, but, uh, Maybe I'm just hungry, but I think I'm going to take a break. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think I got to eat something. Okay. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to put this over this for dust. And I'm going to take a break. So number six will stop the recording. Okay, so I just reformatted the drives, the SD cards in the cameras again, and I'm going to start recording. <clears throat> See, as soon as I start recording, it disconnects the uh, SD cards. <clears throat> Okay, I'm back after a short break. I'm um, gonna put this aside and I think the next thing we want to do I want to try put this So, Um, 
<clears throat> so let's try to get this oriented like in the image on the screen. The, the gear with the square is kind of over here. And then this gear goes So I can see how this curve right here goes there. Now, <clears throat> I guess before I do that, I can try to oil some points. One, two, three, four. It's coming too fast. One, two, three, four. Now those are kind of too much. So we're going to have to go back. Okay, so I think iPhone's interesting for this. So this seems super critical to me because if any of those gears don't line up, see those four basically, the three gold gears plus the one below with the, the interfaces with the pallet fork. If any of those don't line up with the um, jewels, then we have a problem. But I think if I'm gentle, it'll just find its way. And then maybe I can kind of turn something and see if it's, if it's all working correctly. Uh, just got to look at, there's a fourth and fifth jewels on this. I don't, are those the, I got to make sure that there's nothing that needs to be under those first. Maybe those are facing the other direction. So these two jewels they're facing the other direction. Now <clears throat> I guess the way to go about this is just like There's some kind of locating pin here. It's not a locating pin, but it's going to serve as such. That just seemed too easy. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so I'm worried about this. Um, basically, I'm I'm not worried about. It. I just want to I just want to express what. So. There's a gap um, right here in between the plate I'm putting on and the and the main plate. It's 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 like paper thin, but I want to see that gap kind of close gently without any force because that's could be being held up by uh, by um, one of the tips of those gears not being perfectly aligned with. Jewel. I guess maybe can I see that? Come on, try to focus. Difficult to say. <clears throat> Okay, anyway, the way to do this, is just touch it a little bit. What if we rotate this a little bit and see if... <laughs> so... <clears throat> I'm sure my instinct is right about how this
Okay, so <clears throat> yeah, I guess this is probably worth looking at. So the problem is this, if I See when I touch that gear, everything is rocking around in there. And partly I just lifted that up, but it was doing that before. So that means uh, it's not it's not seated correctly. And the easiest thing to do, I think that the approach I'll take is lift off that whole plate again. And then um, just look at what's going on. This might this might be a disaster. Well, it doesn't matter. Might lift some of those gears off too, or I might lift and drop it. Okay, so what I see here is that this guy probably I think this is not in where it's supposed to be. Because that's got the job of, it's got two gears. That was a bad tap. Uh, mm. 
So I can see it's rocking on, you know, something that's not right. Here you can kind of see it. I would say this guy is not located correctly at all right now. So that's sliding all over. I'm not sure why. <clears throat> that was a that was not a bad <clears throat> that was a good <clears throat> I felt like it went into where it was supposed to, but enough. Okay, we'll try this again. I don't think it's gonna be any better. Ooh. That looked chaotic, but actually there's these locating pins. No, that was chaotic. I certainly understand what's going on here. It's just uh, uh, it's just a very tiny world. These gears, um, you know, they're not just random. They, they, they have to line up and they have to be in there. They have to be in their respective jewels and that's just not super easy that's just feels too
No, this just won't work. Okay, so that kind of feels like like this gear dropped into where it's supposed to be. Ooh, but the magnet didn't help. Let me look at something here. Oh man, that's got like no point on it. It does have a point, but it is it may be broken. Okay, the magnetic thing is not working for me there. So here's my feeling. That's all that's all seated correctly now. But uh as soon as I try to put this on top first of all, it could snap and just fly. Second of all, any kind of nudge So basically that vibration of like placing it, it just throws everything out again. Although it doesn't look thrown out.
Jesus. Now on this one, <clears throat> I can see this is not lined up, but how? So I feel like the only thing that might happen is it might just accidentally If I keep playing with it, eventually it might just accidentally fall into place. I would say the problematic gear, oh, sorry. So I feel like those are all seated in the bottom jewels and they just
just doesn't slip in. I wonder if it's possible that I just have, I, I, I'm off with something, like I'm just missing some point here. How do I know that thing is in its correct position? Um, so because of, because it's been 20 minutes of doing this and no, no success, I, I'm going to have to just take a long look at what's going on there. <clears throat> I wonder if there's an issue with this. Can I do this? If there's an issue with this guy.
See what's happening, you can see, I don't even have to explain, all those four gears have to line up, the mini gears too, and then those, the, the tips of those have to go into the, the jewels on the top, and how, how to align them uh, just doesn't, I uh, just don't know. I think it's just going to be a random event. One day it'll line up accidentally. It would help if I wasn't so shaky, I think, but... It's, it's like as soon as there's... Oh, maybe it would help if I remove... No. Nah. I was going to say, if I remove that screw that anchors and goes... That, that, Okay, I'm going to do something. <clears throat> Part of it is also making it difficult for me because I'm trying to keep this view available. But I'm going to go. I'm going to go directly face down on it, and then maybe you can see it from the side. So that seemed worse than ever.
Okay, I think... I think I might have got it. But now... Okay. So basically the <clears throat> the reason I think I got it is that this no longer oh wait. When I press on these two points, there's no rocking back and forth. And the other thing is I can see that this gear... This gear is trying to transmit energy to that pallet fork, um, which is what you would expect when it's all geared correctly. So <clears throat> I think I'm going to put some screws in here and hope for the hope that this doesn't have to come apart again that that particular part. The only question would be was there some gear that goes under a gear like this guy can I get that in there probably uh, I know there's a gear on top of this and there's that little thing and then that gear. I think that I think everything can come together around that. Okay, so I think I need to look at screw numbers, which are probably Oh, I was comparing it with the other movement there. Okay, there's two of those screws are out at this point. Okay, they're all in. And that's uh, 155.26. So I'm going to go for, can you see that? I'm going to go for this screw next. Okay, so that screw is... Oh, that, because that screen is not upside down, it's very confusing to me. Um,
This is the screw that I'm working on. And I think that's going to require the biggest screwdriver I have, which is 0.8. Each time you go in there, oh, I got the hand in the shot again. Each time I go into a screw, I want to make sure that I'm not using too small or misaligned screwdriver. Okay, so now somehow I have to keep track of this. So this guy is going into 42. And then the question is, oh, I see another, I see another one right here. Okay, so 42, I got that. Problem is the um, magnetic thing. So I have to say I'm having so much fun right now because I thought this would be impossible, and just to even take it apart. Forty-three. 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 And that was the one that was this screw. Right. I, I, I still, I know I won't get it back together again, but I know that this is doing what I want to do, which is to have a feeling for what a real, what the real experience of, oh wait, that, geez. I think, I don't think I broke that. Ooh, what am I talking weird. about? That's brand new plastic tweezer and it's killed already. Oh wait, I did. I stuck it under the movement. Um, I think I was trying to do some prying. So nothing's really budging from those two screws. Okay, so those are not very tight. So yet. I could have the other side. Let's see if I, I could have to side. remove the top of this first. Oh, I just wish there was a way. They, 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 they probably designed it so you don't have to. You could do a repair without complete disassembly. So let's work our way around the edge here. Okay, so then I did these other two. That That's this done. screw. Let me look at if that's obvious, actually. 42. I guess we're going to be 48, 49 next. But let's see. You would think that you could remove that. If, if the automatic movement is working, you could design it to remove that. So that's 44. 44 and 45 don't count. When they designed the watch so you can remove the automatic movement and replace something else without complete disassembly? That's not what my plan was either, because I think I'm doing complete disassembly, but... Oh, so back to the pleasure of, of doing this right now. Um, I'm in that world, like I entered that world. <laughs> that I, when I looked at this, it made me feel um, I could never enter that world. And that's why I wanted to enter that world of, of something that tiny. When I looked at this movement, I was like, this can't be, that world is not, I'm not permitted in that world. And right now I'm in that world. So again, doing this concept of going around the edge. Next, I'm gonna do this, this screw right here. Yeah. Stupid, I guess I need a better case holder. Um, 
I could remove that face right now. Oh, then I remove the face, and that's why I see that gear. And then the next two will be 47, 48, actually. So it doesn't get messed up, since I know how to do it. You can see. Oh man, you know, what I should have done with this video is none of it. Okay, stupidity. He just did that to make it more dramatic, like a before and after picture. There's no way anybody buries the Rolex in the garden. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm back to, I'm going to focus on this screw now. Oh, that's a tiny screw. 47. Okay, that's where I saw 47. Oh man, that is a freaking tiny screw. Okay, so I can just confirm 48 is the next one. That screw is freaking tiny. It's, it's well, probably the same size as the last one. <laughs> it was actually small. Oh shit, what am I doing? This is that movement. Uh, God damn it. Um, doesn't matter. Uh, it's just a little bit confusing. The only screws here from the other movement are those two. Okay, so anyway, I know it's 48. Oh, I just did the big bus thing. <laughs> the the big bus was the atomic bus story where I just grabbed it with my fingers, even though I should use 
oil protection. Um, I'm kind of psyched because the that that just getting those screws in that's probably why I was pressing harder. There's a sense of like um, knowing that those those four gears are 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 in place now. That just makes me feel like uh, a big part of the battle is over. And you have to have all four of these screws in there to know that that's settled. And I'm just really worried that I'm going to find out I have to remove that again to do put something else in, underneath there. But. So kind of like lug nuts on a wheel. I'm just going around doing all four of those. Okay. <clears throat> Now we could do a little test here where when I wiggle this gear, you should see the pallet fork gear move a little bit. And the reason it doesn't move more is because it's being blocked by the teeth, which is what it's supposed to do. And those teeth are, when those teeth move, they release the pressure, uh, and that's where it gets its timing, right? So then you need the other thing. You need the balance wheel and everything to, timing the timing that interaction. Holy crap. <clears throat> um, now, I went out of order, so uh, I think I want to go back to the bottom now. I know I'm cheating. Okay, now <clears throat> just want to check something. Okay, we're going to go find the bottom. Here we are. I think I just flipped it over and I'm tightening it here. some stuff going on under here. I don't really see what would be holding that gear. Oh, there's a gear held by a gear. Is that right? There's some kind of press fit gear or something. Be again, it's because the hour hand is inside the minute hand and Ooh, there's some really tiny shit going on in there, too. No way. There's no... Okay, that... 241.11. Ooh. 
Ooh, there's some really tiny shit going on in there too. Okay. Not, I think it's less complicated than it seemed, but I don't want to get ahead of myself here. Um, so I understand that, uh, Sorry. Uh, whoops. That is cr just crazy amount of oil, like. <laughs> oh wait, actually this guy probably needs a little bit too. Um, oops. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, and then we got to lay these little thingies in there. So we got this little... That thing. Something looks completely different. Because I have the barrel out. The barrel is in this one. So then, plus I'm looking through that. Hmm. Well, I feel like this will kind of tell us. I think that goes like that. Oh, but the pin goes up? Yeah, that's how I had it, no? Am I doing something wrong? Well, you know what? These guys can go in there now, I think.
And then there's, is this the tiny gear that goes? I find this kind of weird that this doesn't want to I can pretty much see that in the picture, but I don't see the pin that's going in the eye of that thing. Maybe that's a screw. Oh, that's the, um, that's the old, that's the old screw that sets the setting setter. Hmm. Okay, I gotta take a look at that because that I think I think it's not round or something. I think that has a flat side or something. Kind of complicated. <clears throat> this is really fun because if you, if you know, if you've used watch enough to kind of have a feeling of what these things are, it's always been a mystery to me what the, what was actually going on in there. Not sure I'll remember this, but. Now, what if we just turn this from underneath?
I gotta look at that again with a microscopish thing. The thing I'm interested in here is I want to look at both sides of this in extreme detail. Uh, I noticed I, I did I cleaned this thing, but I noticed it was um, I noticed it was kind of whatever gnarly there. Um, it still just seems like it should press on to that. I think I'm just being a coward, not pressing down, but. Because I see it in the picture. Oh, the other thing is just maybe I should just make sure that this this guy really just pull this back. So um, where's that video? Uh, this is the, the the screw that you loosen to remove the crown. And I, I guess it's just oval. It looks round to me, but it's microscopically small. And Seems like it's oval. <sighs> so if that's the case, I just need to keep... Oval would make sense. I just need to keep trying it until, until I find it the position it wants to go. Shoot, I should have kept this. Okay.
Wait, what's on the bottom of that? There's a, I gotta be careful about that. Okay, I'm trying to think of one thing. Is it possible? No. Okay, I lost some of my gears there, that's okay. Okay, so I have another theory about this setting screw, which is it's not oval. However, I've, I've reverted to touching only around the edges. And then I'll clean the edges afterwards. Um, the setting screw is not oval. It's it, it it it's offset. The tip of it is offset. Oh no, it's threaded. Duh. It's threaded, so it does. It's just a weird thread because it's it's like um it's a giant thread. Okay, so I think that helps me. That's why they say don't turn it too many times. Well, whatever. Whatever it is, it is. It's threaded. It's just that. So I'm going to hold it in place. It could be reverse threaded. Could be I'm wrong. What the hell? That thing's moving like crazy now.
Okay, we're gonna get there. Oh shit, what's that gear? I gotta be careful here. I know what it is, but. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Okay, we still got... It's not that complicated. It's just... This thing also seems to be spring-loaded. Which... Okay, I got it finally. Okay. Uh, there. You can see the... Okay, now I can drop these other screws back where they belong. Uh, screws, uh, gears. Um... Now, I remember how these go, so, because this has a, this one faces, this has two kinds of gear on it. One faces this gear I'm about to drop in, and the other, oops, that's backwards. <sighs> this is the one that faces this way. Come on. Oh, that's not right. Backwards again. Okay, that's it. Now you can kind of see how these two gears just press together to kind of make one. And that's the point. Now this goes in like that. I remember from when I took it apart that that didn't have a top or a bottom. We've got that gear setting thing there. And now we can start to stack these other things. So there's this thing, which looks like it goes Okay, so that that makes sense. That pushes on, that separates this gear, you know, for setting. And then you got the, um, oh, and then there's the hairspring, which is not the hairspring. Did 
Does it make sense that this goes like that? I think so. But again, I'm going to try to keep this from launching. unsuccessfully um so in theory in theory I could just squeeze this in there it wants to launch right now Okay, so another approach would be squeeze it and then drop it in, then release it. But we gotta get this in the right place first. Hmm. Okay, that was a slightly better launch. As in, time to be very careful. While I look for that. Okay, I found it. <laughs> uh, could I take a break now? I just thought of like this, the most depressing thing, which is like working in a watch factory. Like masochism is one thing, but no, like anything, when you master something, it's fun to feel like you're good at something. When you're not good at something, it's not as fun. So again, I think Ronico can help me. Okay, I think that's what I want. And then the only thing left is the this guy, which will then goes over those screws and it will be screwed on itself. Cool. Okay, and then this is also... I recognize the... Now what's that? Um, okay, it needs to needs to go down on this and this two pins and a spring action and a screw right there and that screw is what I need to know which screw that is now And then you'll see <clears throat> um, after I as I after I start that screw, then I need to pull this. This is a little spring arm. I need to pull this back so that it latches on the point it's supposed to latch on. Holy crap! Okay, so. Let's see where that screw... 
is No way. There's no way I'm going to put this back together again. Okay, so um, here we go. Looks like 54. But... This is this screw. This screw in the center of this, I've seen this part, could be 50 for One. sale for different movements. 52. Probably has a name. Because um, the bottom half of this is kind of standard watch stuff. Okay, so that screw is going into uh, 54. 54. Okay. <clears throat> um, don't want to use a metal plier, really. So that, that whole plate needs to be tightened up as, after I get a start on that screw. So we got to Basically, this part right here has to be pulled back. I think it's safe to do that now. Yeah. My screwdriver is loose. The bit in this is loose, so I'm going to have to fix that. And all these bits are kind of, maybe they're just too strong. Um, okay, so I think the bottom of the watch is done. And I got to move back to the top, but I'm going to take a break. Um... How are we doing? I'd, I'd say it's getting pretty close. Hopefully I didn't forget anything. Okay, so continuing on. Um, The bottom is done. There's a gear that we'll put on later. Ooh. Can I keep my head out of the frame? So that's separate the hour hand from the minute hand. Oops. I don't remember where that goes, but it doesn't really matter. Um, <clears throat> that's crazy. Now, because I kind of did some stuff out of order. 
need to figure out where to, what we want to go back to here. Should I? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's just, it's not that much left to do, actually. So there is this gear. And I remember, okay, I know what this is. This goes... Um, <clears throat> where was I? <clears throat> okay, so that gear, I guess that gear, yeah. That gear has a screw on top of it, and then we've got this little thing. Okay, so first we're going to scroll. That's probably kind of at the beginning. So you can see here the way this guy goes. Right? But what's what holds that in place or makes that turn? I don't know.
Okay, so the question is... Um, where... Where did we put that screw? This, this big gear is over, there's a little something under here. So I have to remove this gear. I guess say 40, 41, could be 51 though. That's going in. 50, 49, 50, 51. Ooh. Now, this gear doesn't want to come up. Well, it's got this tensioner on it. So, this gear has this. This is a small screwdriver. Um, again, I'm, I'm going after this screw right here. So that's going to be the reason 52. And <clears throat> by the way, the I know that the divot goes up. I discussed when I was taking this apart, there's a recess in, the, in this gear on one side. It obviously goes up because it's actually like a, a kind of flat countersink for this screw. And also on the bottom, there's a square part that engages with the barrel. Um, So then, 52. So offhand, I don't really understand how this I feel like there there's some kind of spring necessary for this thing to work. Could that come from above? Or do I have to screw it down all the way? Um so there's a, there's some kind of spring missing there. Uh, so it could be some tiny part or it could be something 
that uh, that looks round without a divot in it, right? Is that the spring? Oh, because remember that thing flew. Hmm. Okay, let's look at this again. Is I feel like that's putting some tension on this, like this gear should lift, but you can't because of that. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, so this screw that was in this little bit there is here. So I'm going to grab that. Oh wait, you can't see that. Hey, yeah, can in the watch. Um, and that's going to go in 52. I'm what reaching a point which I, um <clears throat> I wasn't listening to that, so I gotta listen to that. Oh, that's the screw. It's in this little bit there, is here, so I'm gonna grab that. Oh, wait, you can't see that. Hey, yeah, can in the watch. Um, and that's this little Okay, let me show you what I'm looking at here. 229.25. Oh boy. Okay, so this screw that was in this little bit there. Bit. Okay, so the weird thing is, I. I can't tell if there's a... I can't tell if there's something missing there or not. I would say not. There's just like a little yellow dot where you see into the divot there. Looks the same here. That's like a highlight from above. So then the question is how, what spring is that thing? It's free to move right now. So then we'll, okay, so let's assume there's no string missing. Then we can go to the piece, whatever piece fits on top of that. One oh nine forty. 
Oh, here you can kind of see it also. There's nothing missing there. Strange, no? Okay, this is driving me crazy. The problem is this video is too long. Meaning the scroll is too uh, sensitive. So something weird is happening already. The screw, as it comes... Oops. 35, Something weird is happening already. The screw, as... Okay, I cannot figure out how that cannot be spring loaded and how it can do anything. How can it have a function without being spring loaded? It can't. So it has a spr it has a spring under it. It had a tiny, tiny spring under it, and that spring went somewhere. Okay, so that's a drag because that's the tiniest spring in the world, and it went somewhere undesirable. Oh. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at something here which is the moment that occurred. We're going to watch it again in slow motion. Okay, so <clears throat> I don't have an answer to that right now, except for it looks like if I play this again, That's the big gear and that hit me and went under and then that other thing went under my hand and I saw two images of the little gizmo in a frame like right when it hits my hand and bounces right 
there see how it looks like there's two that that i think that that's just the camera sony camera shutter being weird like scanning it twice but the question is is there any place where that could have gone can't even really imagine what that how that spring works okay but uh, I think I'm gonna take a break again and I'm gonna look for that spring because the watch is not gonna work without it and um, I'm also probably gonna see if I can figure out if that's a part that exists somewhere I mean not like It's just, I know what it would be. It would just be like a, a, a coiled spring with a pin. Maybe we can see it here. And there is no way. Oh, could I look at the, this watch? Okay, let's do that. There's a couple of interesting things about this other movement, which is I hate my I I'm the pauses must be so annoying. This other movement, um, let me see. Oh, that's the gear that fell off. Okay, I know what that is, so let's don't worry about that. I'll put that back in a second. Um, here's what I want to do. I just want to touch this where you can see it and just see, make sure that there's spring action there. Yeah. So there's just a little spring coiled around the base of that that is so fucking tiny it's ridiculous and it's missing. Now about this gear, I need to put the face on the watch to protect this gear from getting lost. Ah. Okay, so I'm going to pause because the there's some tiny chance that I can find that spring. And like I said, uh, without it, um, K 
can't move forward. Okay, it's only about 10 minutes later. You're not going to believe this. Um, I, uh, I may have what I need here because I accidentally bought these tiny springs. Where's that camera? I accidentally bought these tiny springs from Cousins uh, a month or so ago because I want to prove that I'm not lying. Um, where's the date on this? Eight twenty eight. Oh, sorry, February eight. Date. February 8, and uh, it's March 9 now. Uh, I'm not sure how I can prove that, but it's on my laptop, March 9. Okay, so February 8, I bought this, and it, it includes round wire springs for wristwatch. Now, the thing was, I was buying um, uh, a crown for this watch. The reason I'm being defensive is like I, I didn't plan this and I can't believe I accidentally have a spring. I'm going to have to try to craft it. But basically this watch is just a $25 watch. Uh, from the same uh, the, the Ricardo used website and it requires a case back what I would call a spring, but it's like a ring that goes around here and it, it's a tension ring with springing thing and it holds the, holds the movement in place. And I know it needs that because I have another one that's just like it that has the thing. So there's the crown or that's, I'm not sure if that's the exact crown I ordered, but the, uh, I, I've ordered a few crowns to try to get this right. Now, the funny thing about this, okay, so I'll show you, I, I'm not going to do it, but on Cousin's website, you can't tell the scale of that spring. So I was like, well, I thought if it's a spring for wristwatches, it was, I thought it might be the case back spring. So when I got them and they were tiny like that, I was like, oh, that's, I'll never use that. I have no idea what that is. And I think it's going to have to be modified to, um, to work in any case. Uh, this is what this is a the Flurrier, uh, which is the town in Switzerland where Panerai uh, is made. I think Flurrier, what's it called, Flurrier Parmigiani or something is another brand from this town. But that Flurrier Flurrier Parmigiani factory makes Panerai, something like that. Anyway, this is this is just ETA twenty seven forty two or twenty four seventy two, but um, I haven't I, don't, I haven't touched that movement. It's just like trying to do crystals and crowns and waterproof. Okay, so then the other so the thing is in order I I took the um, I took the the little thing off of this. And there's a screw for it. And I could see there's a tiny hole right by the tip of the, there's a tiny hole there, which like one end of the spring has to go in that. And then the other end of the spring has to come up and, and, and push on the, push on the cutout in the, Clicker. So the chances, like, so I think these springs, I have no idea if these springs are actually for that or if, if wristwatch repair, you have a bunch of little springs like this. <clears throat> it seems unlikely that these would be the right size for a watch this tiny, but maybe it's assorted. There's a hundred of them.
Uh. So the thing is, I'm going to have to find... Oh, the other thing is, this gives you an idea of how, how difficult it might be to... To find a spring like this, if it if it if it's shot across the room, I did look around, but oh boy, oh you can't see where I'm doing what I'm doing here. Um. Okay, so I'm gonna try to take one that's tiny and put it over here. So I have a pair of pliers ready to try to bend the end of it. This is like the magic rings magic trick. They all have like a cut in them. Here's another small one. Okay, so. These are in fact assorted sizes. There's a giant one. Um, <clears throat> so. I think that's a nice small one there. I'm going to use Was I blocking that the whole time? I'm going to use my pliers. I'm going to see if I can put a Oops, seems like there's some magnetism there. Damn it. Okay, my plan is, if I can get that to unstick. I gotta think about this now. This spring needs to go in here. In such a way that it's pulling It's pushing okay I think I have the theory down I'm sure my broken sentences helps a lot in understanding what I think so I have a fat pair of tweezers here. So what I'm going to try to do is put a 90 degree bend in this spring. like that. So that's a 90 degree going down. And now on the other end, I want a 90 degree going up.
Hmm. And I want the I want that one to pull on down up. Wait, these have no This thing is not really a spring. Well, I guess it is. It doesn't seem strong enough, this one. Maybe I should try it anyway. Hmm. Let's try this again. If that goes down, Now, is that what I wanted to do? That seems wrong. I wanted to go down and I went up. But if I flip it around like this, then it's up, but that's the wrong. Okay, so that would go down, that would go up. That just seems too big. But maybe not. Hmm. I don't think this is going to work. Oh, that's interesting. Tweezer. Spring gone. That's why any watchmaker needs a hundred of these things. So the idea is anchor it in the hole. Let's 
spin it once around there, but how's it going to cause, how's it going to make this move? It has to be wanting to open up and, and push that. It has to be wanting to expand. So how does that work? It wants to expand. And when you when you push that back manually, that pulls it tighter and then it's, it wants to expand back to that point. That pulls it tighter, smaller, expand back to that point. So then In that orientation, you need down into that hole, up to grab it, but expanding doesn't, maybe it needs to be the other way and it needs to pull. So if it's the other way and it's pulling, then Doesn't make sense either. Pulling means what? There's nowhere for the tension to go. Oh, that means this would go in the hole. Oh god, that thing just shot over shot somewhere too. It would go once it would go one complete thing around. Maybe that works too. And then it's down, goes around once the other way. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not sure there's any difference in what I'm saying. Okay, I'm going to try again. Okay, so what you want to do is put put the right angle on this. So that goes down into the hole. Then you want to put the up angle on this. So it's pulling it. That's what I can't figure out. When you push it back, it pulls it tight, but then it, but it wants to pull it this way. And th this has to be bent at the right place to have the right amount of tension.
and then I need to cut it doesn't even feel like it's a spring it feels like it's just a metal wire <sighs> I'm going to try to place it, even though it's got this, I, I need to trim it, I'm going to try to place it and see if it functions. If it functions, then I'll figure out how to trim the extra part off. So the thing is, this needs to go Oh, maybe I shouldn't use, maybe I should use plastic I feel like it's not the right band either. Did that thing just disappear also? I think I, I, I want to have these little hair springs all over the place, or whatever spring they are. <sighs> oh, there it is. This is so ridiculous. I'm trying to put this tiny I'm looking at the video just to see if I can even see what I just did. You can barely see it, but basically the idea is that spring is anchored in that hole.
Okay, where'd that go? I don't feel like making that again. But that time it went. Okay, I'm going to take a, a break and just express my frustration. This is a very small staple. Like the smallest staple made. Oh wait, I just found the spring, good. This is the spring I'm trying to make. Staple, very small, spring, handmade, custom design. <laughs> the thing that's so frustrating is I, I know, I actually know this will work. The only problem is the frickin' spring material is not very springy. It's probably because I bought the springs from India instead of from Switzerland. Nothing against India. But it does seem like they would call like something that's not as springy a spring and Switzerland would insist that it would be very springy. They wouldn't call it a spring. Okay, so like <clears throat> maybe I should just get the get this thing involved right away. It's going to work. It's going to work great. And by the way, what a great business watch repair would be for me. So time, I'm so fast. Oh, you dumb. I don't know who I'm talking to, me or the spring. Um, it's just a little bit not bent enough to, to, to easily drop down where I want it to go. Okay, that should do it. Sorry, you need to see this. So basically, I put a tighter loop in it. I need to make sure that this right angle is enough to actually keep it in place. I also don't know how deep that hole is or what it's going to bump into if it's if it's too long in that direction
Okay, so my theory is once this goes on top, the spring is stuck. So the problem is even even the screwdriver now is deadly because it's 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 magnetized. Okay. Um, like I said, I have a de demagnetizer, but that's too big. That's point eight. Where's the other screwdriver? Okay, I'm trying to touch down on this screw without lifting it magnetically, turn it without cross-threading it to capture that spring under Okay, the only problem is the spring doesn't feel like it's springy. It feels like it's it, it's 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 caught like it's jammed, like it's <sighs> like it's pinched and maybe if it wasn't pinched it would be springy but I don't feel springiness so there's two places where it could be jammed one is kind of right there at the corner and the other is underneath Underneath shouldn't matter so much. Yeah, it would because it would put friction on that thing. So if the if the if the point underneath is too long, it's it's you know where I did the right angle underneath, then it's pushing up on the mechanism and, and causing friction that we don't want because we want that thing to ro rotate smoothly. And then it, 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 if it's jammed in the just in the side there, then that means that there needs to be a tighter loop on the spring. And I'm going to cut that extension off eventually. But it's kind of working. It's just if you push it back, the friction from wherever it's jamming is just is holding it back instead of springing it back where it belongs.
Okay, so the first thing I can do is say, what happens if I And maybe the spring is, uh, it's just not cut short enough. Could you see that? Or am I having a little bit? So like if I pull this gear back, it just stays back. But if I pull on the spring, it goes where it's supposed to go. So that just means the spring is, is not springy enough. meaning there's not enough tension there. And that friction thing, it's almost working. You see, I pull it back, it springs forward. It just doesn't spring quite enough because the, because I made it a little bit too, sh not too, not short enough. <clears throat> Um, this is just a reminder of what's going on here. Okay, so I want to I'm going to remove it and try to shorten the spring that I just made. I have plenty of raw materials for making springs. That one's kind of garbage. Let's hope I don't have to dip back into that, but realistically, I probably will. Um, staple, go to the garbage. And this spring, prepare for going to the garbage. Is there anything I can do to make this easier on myself? Like that. The magnetic effect. Okay, I'm gonna get some kind of cutter. What should I use? 
The IWC Swiss Army Knife. First of all, there's, it's going to have no problem cutting, cutting the spring. But let's do a test. Uh, is that in the shot? Yeah. Did that cut? Yes. Okay. So we have a cutting tool. Appropriately branded. The next thing is grab the spring. with the fat tweezer. Ugh. I'm tempted just to cut this off right now. So I'm going to cut basically the whole thing Okay, everything that was excess is now somewhere um, And then we're going to put a new New bend in it. I'm also tempted to trim a tiny hair off of this. And then trim That end also. And then make sure those are both square. Okay, so <clears throat> same thing. First, I want to try to put it So we're going to have to use a plastic tweezer. OK. 
It's almost in there already. Now, <clears throat> this is tricky because to get the tension on it, I need to catch that. Whoa. Maybe I can use the magnetism to my advantage. That's the way it's supposed to work. Okay, so the trick here was I caught the spring in in the divot in the thing. Now I need to rotate this, which which now tensions the spring. Rotate this over the gear, slip it down, tighten the screw And now I demonstrate to you the working thing. Maybe. Pull it back. Mm. Maybe not. Okay, it's kind of working. It's not good enough. So here's another way to activate it. My feeling is
Should be working. So you see it's working, but it doesn't like it when I tighten. It doesn't like it when I tighten the screw. as if the spring is too uh, fat. It's either too fat or or it's just not seated properly. or it's got a, a bend in it. Okay, we're gonna look at that with the phone. I see what's happening now. It's almost like the spring is too small and it's riding up on the rim that belongs to the, you know, when I, when I screw the, the divot down, um, it might work this time though, but basically it's riding up and sitting on the lip that's supposed to hold the, the doohickey. Let's see if there is a lip there. Uh, or, yeah, uh, mm. yeah, there is. There has to be. See, that spring has to live down in that trough, I think, unless... Is it possible that there's like a spring built into that thing? 
No way, right? No, because there's a hole there. So that spring has very little leeway for being the wrong size. So I have to make it a little bit bigger. I'm tempted to try it one last time, but I know it's it's not going to... It's like a half a millimeter too short now. Oh, maybe not. Maybe that'll go down. I have a feeling it slipped out, might have slipped out on the bottom. Because that seems too good to be true right now. This one has no magnetism. What? Yeah, so what I suspected was that it Same problem.
Okay, so that's our reference for slightly too small. Let's see, uh, Okay. Now the question is, can is it possible I could adjust that? There's nothing movable down in there, right? No. That spring has a place where it can go, and it just has to stay back. So, I think it's easier just to reference that and make one that's right than try to adjust it again. using a tool. It's like anything, once you know what you're doing, this will be, last time it took me an hour and five minutes. No. This time it'll take me five minutes. Okay, so, um, I'm trying to put the downward bending point And then maybe use a tweezer with more accuracy to try to put the curve in this.
So we got the downward bend, and then upward. Okay, I just lost it again. <clears throat> I wonder if this video could be like the intellectual equivalent of ASMR, like You can watch it and just watch somebody suffer with something stupid. I don't want to pretend like it's real suffering, but um, hmm. that might be a good. If I, assuming I lost the last one. Okay. <laughs> I don't think I could see that without I have a flashlight for looking. Gonna have to vacuum. The disappearing tricks of dropping things are quite amazing. I like the police flashlight. It's so overkill. Okay. Uh. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, I like this one better. Okay, that's our downward pointing point. Then it's hard to judge the, the loop amount without trying to get the right radius on it.
You know, it's interesting. If this was like real, um, real spring steel, it would be really, really difficult to work with, I think. I mean, it's so easy to work with as it is. It's crazy. So it's kind of random how much the length of that thing. That looks too short again. Once I put the same curve on this, it's going to be the same shortness. Yeah, I don't think I made it any longer. See, that thing just broke. How do you deal with that? I mean, it's one thing to be not st st spring steel, but it's another thing to be breaking. Okay, I'm gonna try this. Hmm, plastic tweezer.
I love the idea that when I edit this, I can cut it like it's an action film. It's an eight camera shoot. Okay. <clears throat> I don't think this is going to work, but uh, I'm going to try. <clears throat> So again, the first thing I have to do is just try to catch the spring. Kind of like that. Then start the screw. Um, which one of these is not magnetic? Okay, what I would say happened there is, is kind of better, but the, the slipped out of the... Um, I'm pretty sure that the, the other end of the spring slid out and is not engaged where it should be. It may also be pancaked. Is that it? I think that's it. Okay, these guys are confusing me. That's too short. That's my old short reference.
So that's not surprisingly, I suppose the springiness of the spring is a problem. I think this is similar to a lot of things I do where it's like you would think I would just give up but I always feel like I'm just within reach so like you can kind of see it right like Here's a spring, it happens to be the size of a hair. It happens to have to fit in that hole. If I don't make it fit in that hole, the watch won't work. So I just keep doing it, keep trying. I have a feeling I need to trim. I have a feeling it's just a little bit too long. The part that goes into the little hole. Oh man, okay. So I trimmed it a little bit off of there. Because <laughs> if it goes in and then it's, it's not... If it's too long, then it automatically sticks up. It automatically doesn't... doesn't settle correctly.
and when I drop this on it, it just wants to slide out. So I'm hoping that now when I drop this on it, it won't want to slide out. But I have to say, there's a kind of impossible game going on here. It may require some skills and knowledge that I don't possess. Okay, so the spring is out. I need some kind of new strategy. could be that I have to have the right radius on it like I have before or maybe I don't have the right radius.
Okay, when I put the, when I place this this time, I'm going to try to think of something different. Oh, I know what the something different is. Oh, God damn it. This gear should not be there. That gear is stopping me from being able to... Oh, boy. So this gear is stopping me from being able to get the spring placed correctly. See, where's that thing? Um, you, you've probably been noticing this for like an hour and, and screaming. Uh, even if this is not the correct spring size that I've made, this is the correct way to do it. Because I can properly trap this the spring with this gear being flat before I tension it. And then when I tension it, the, the spring is, is already... Now part of the reason I suppose my excuse for why I didn't figure this out before is that I didn't take this apart correctly. I was surprised by the spring. So now you can make sure it's working, and it may not be. But you can make sure it's working before see it, it, it's this the spring is too short again so when i force it all the way back to where it needs to be it, it's slipping the spring is slipping under because it, it's running out of spring nevertheless that is the technique that must be used. That's why I said like, I, I, I should have taken a different approach an hour ago, but I said, I'm gonna think about it this time because this is not working. And there's a there's a, some kind of degree of masochism involved in not not doing so sooner, but I I think it's that partly is born of like refusing to not wanting to give up or show not wanting to say I, I couldn't I couldn't do it that way, like no I can do it this way, I can do it this way. Perhaps. 
but perhaps you should look for the easier way. One hour and 40. This is like complete magic rings territory here. Okay, so we're just going to go do it again. I have a tendency to make these things too short, so I'll try to make it longer, but I'm not going to go crazy this is also obviously possible to make it too long overcompensate no come on Ah. There's like, uh, it, it, it. There's a correct length, and there's not a whole lot of leeway. So dumb. <sighs> the spring was a little bit too not curved enough. So what should I do? Squeeze it. Squeeze it carelessly without thinking about the fact that squeezing it results in one Frickin' thing, which is it randomly flies somewhere and disappears. Oh my god. This is not it. This is another not it thing. I just, I just made, I just was happy with that. I would love to have, um, so many cameras set up that like you could trace everything every little flying spring <sighs> jesus sorry <clears throat> okay seems like it's time to make a new one
I feel like there's something that happens, which is after a certain number of hours, I just get tired. Did that just break off or what happened? That's fine, okay. Okay, uh, head, uh, okay, I feel like it's still not, it's not the right radius, and I need to trim this a bit more. Maybe it's okay. Plastic. Okay, I believe it may be a little bit too long. But if it is, it'll be out of my sight in no time anyway when it springs away. Yikes. 
Now I want to find the magnetic one again. Two out of three are not, so this one should be. <clears throat> okay, so let's see what happens. Okay, I failed, but for a different reason. That was a little bit too long. And the spring is, I think it's too thin, the metal. But if it's if we assume it's only too long, I could do a quick adjustment. The thing I felt was like, why is the oh, I think it's gone. Um, every time I'm careless, the spring is gone. But anyway, what I was saying is, it feels like I need more, I need a, a, a larger piece of metal. They're kind of different. This one is considerably larger. And I'm getting faster and faster at making these. And I know what the goal is. I mean, the, it's, it's within sight that this will work.
No way. You... <clears throat> I don't want to search for another one. I mean, I don't want to... I don't want to keep doing this. There must be a dozen on the floor, but they're all... Who knows where the one that I want is. <clears throat> like, so, so the thing is, I said stupidly, I'm getting faster, which then I try to prove by going too fast. I really wish I hadn't lost that one. And where are they going? <sighs> okay. Another thing I believe a sensible person would do prior to getting to this point in terms of wasting so much time would be to try to figure out what the correct length is for the spring. Like this, uh, this is too long. Seems about right. I have to try to radius it. Radius it without losing it.
Okay. <clears throat> Hard to say if that's right or not. Now, trying to jam it in there caused some new radiusing problem. This seems pretty good. I'm having a hard time seeing the scale until I get it in place. Like, I think because this wire is thicker. Okay, I think it's in there now. I just gotta. Now that still feels too big. No, maybe not. Now it's possible I thought yellow was magnetic. Um Okay, I think it. I, I think I got it. <clears throat> I hate to say that, but but that seems to be working. 
So to any watchmaker watching this who saw me lose that spring four hours ago and was like, ooh, this guy's in trouble because he lost that spring. There you go. It's a little more difficult to place this gear because I have to line up the squareness underneath. Maybe I should actually look at that. Okay, so the reason it's difficult is because the spring is working. Holy crap. Okay, so the only other thing is I need to hold this. It's working. Gear goes this way. Doesn't go the other way. And that's the mainspring, so it's it's already starting to get some tension on it. And I, I don't know what that means about the rest of the gear train. I mean, you have to place the... Okay. <clears throat> that was fucking insane. <sighs> okay, I just want to remind anybody who's watching at this point that you just watched or not, you, you probably didn't watch it, but I just spent two hours making a spring this big which is smaller than Eisenhower's ear on a dime About half the size of Eisenhower's ear. But 
that's done now and uh, it's time for me to wrap it up for the day. So thank you very much and uh, I'll try this again, try to finish this up in the next month or so. <laughs> I mean month of cumulative time. Uh, okay, stopping. Um, I just did this test and um, I'm, I was excited about it. So this is just a, I, I'm already quitting for the day. It's midnight, but um, I just wanted to show you this. The, the, I think it's called the pallet fork. I, you remember I put a little wind on this and I have the, I built the spring to keep it from unwinding. I put a wind on the barrel. And this, this pallet fork thing, it snaps back and forth and stays. So it's to the left right now. Now it's to the right. Now it's to the left. Now it's to the right. So that's the, I, I think that that means I put everything together um, so far. And now I just got to get the balance wheel on there correctly to set the timing of that and then the um and then the automatic winding thing which uh shouldn't be a problem but knock on wood um so that's it i just wanted to uh show off because that's that's a very good sign that freaking spring was hard to do lost replaced it made it by hand um internals are working that stack of four gears that was freaking impossible and um we're in the home stretch okay so um day what one two three four day four it's thursday march 10th and um here's where we left off i think that the next i think I, I did a short video showing the pallet fork at the end of the day yesterday or that the that that thing is twitching back and forth which is a good thing and then i i queued the video up to removing this plate Um, so I guess I'll watch that. And in other videos I've seen when you lift this plate, the balance wheel kind of comes with it because it sticks on that spring. So I'm concerned about... damaging something here these might give me a better grip it's interesting okay so there's there's a tiny slot here actually which is probably for a reason because you need to lift Need to lift that off of those pins. Ooh, look at that. I feel like such a watchmaker. Oh my God. Okay, so now Uh, there's one thing which I I don't remember which is what this thing is okay I see it that's part of the um 
That's part of the automatic movement. So maybe I should do that first. Um, so that would have a gear under it and that thing. So that's this gear. And this thing. Okay, so there's two there's two oil points here and here, and then also here and here, and then these things get trapped in there under that plate. So I think we can do that. Way too much oil, but I can clean that up. These are trickier. These are kind of easy to absorb the oil off. Okay, um, so then this, this gear does, I remember this doesn't sit flat, it floats up a little bit. Oh man, how does that work though? The clicker thing, those clicker wheels. Hmm. This looks like it could range from very difficult to even more difficult.
Okay, I was in the wrong location for that. Okay, it seems like this needs some downward pressure to hold it once it goes into place. Um, I'm going to try to use this to provide that downward pressure. Because it could just sit there loosely and if I get things in the right position, it should all kind of collapse together. Like that. But then Yeah. That's what I thought might happen. It just provided just enough weight just to kind of help that settle right where it wants to be. So the only thing is, um, I need to look at all the all my slots here and make sure I'm not forgetting some gear. Screw, 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 screw. No, it looks fine. This stuff. I feel like there was a screw for that. Uh, maybe not though. Okay, <clears throat> so I think I just need to know these two screws and we're running down to like, I think it would be 49.50. Remove those. Oh, yeah. 
have this other little loop thing. I should get the iPhone going again. Oh my God. Okay. <clears throat> you guys see this? So here we have Cal 44. The thing I want to show you is there's a serial number. I could probably look that up and see what year this is manufactured. But look at that little fork thing. So that's the back side of the that's the back side of the thing that has the little that's like the magic of what's it called? Uh, Okay, there you go. <clears throat> so I want to bring this out and just look at it. watch movement works, which is great. But the problem is once you throw in this automatic peloton movement, it no longer applies. And again, that's what I think is so crazy about this, this project. So I'm going to go for, can you see that? I'm going to go for this screw next. And I think that's going to require the biggest screwdriver I have, which is 0.8. Okay, that's not it. It's in the tray there, though. Those two screws are gone at that point, and I'm prying. Forty-nine. Okay. Forty-nine was the one that's to the left. To my right, sorry. I think it's 49 and 50, and those two are the same. <clears throat>
So I'm going to play this just to confirm, but it's it's got to be 50. The one that's the next one, which is the one actually to the left. I'm going to go for this screw. Yeah. So <clears throat> Oops. That seems correct. And that winds it. That's crazy. Um, okay, so I think I got to put the balance wheel next, and that's oops. So this is tricky. Uh, that spring is kind of blocking access. <clears throat> the 
probably seems absurd. The ridiculously small amount of oil. But <clears throat> So my question about this this part is like there's a couple things there's a position uh, putting this back just seems impossible The problem being how do you how do you how does it grab the okay I, I gotta take a break um There are names for these things which I've seen in videos, but I don't remember the name. But there's basically on the bottom of the um, balance wheel, there's like a, a jewel called the clock jewel or something like that. But the um, that jewel has to go into the, the little three prong of the back of the pallet fork, if that's what it's called. And I just don't see how it, unless it just automatically goes there but how it gets there and then how that spring the whole hairspring has the correct wind on it it just seems like how would how would it how could it end up correct and it won't the one thing oh Um, it seems like the more I play around with this, also the greater risk So I saw a video that said the pallet fork should be in that position. And then the... That special jewel comes in it from the other side or something, but like how these...
So now somehow I need to see I think I think the only way to do this is to keep trying until it works or until it's so broken that it's that it's not going to work.
Mm. Okay. So what if I come at it like this and then rotate? Okay, which screw is that? Mm. I think it's screw number six. That one screw. And in other videos, So the reason I want to do this with the, uh, I want to put that screw in there and then try to see I want to put the screw in there and so that that plate that holds the balance wheel is stable and see if the balance wheel is stable, but it's just not in the right position for the mm. The pallet fork engagement with the special impulse crystal or whatever that's called impulse jewel i think it's something like that
seems a little bit Okay, so what I understood, I'm going to take it apart again, but what I understood is that the, from the one video I looked at last night, is that the impulse jewel needs to come into, so you've got like the three prongs from the, the pallet fork like this, and the impulse jewel is, needs to come in from this side, and then it gets caught like that, like, it, but Right now, I think that the probably the pallet fork clip thing is already on this side and the impulse jewel can't get into it. And then there's a danger that I'm breaking things uh, by, by, by trying to tweak this. But how, the, how on such a tiny thing you get the impulse jewel to go in the correct position is a mystery to me. So, uh, so the, the pallet fork is not in the wrong position to accept the impulse jewel.
That was working. Uh, that's working. Oh, it stopped. But this is the <laughs> this is the problem that the watch always had. It didn't. It worked at certain angles and not at other angles. So I managed. So so I managed to discover what the problem is. Um, <clears throat> but that means at this point I have the impulse jewel in the correct position relative to the pallet fork, and the only problem is the whole. Um, the whole thing seems too loose, but that could be because there's a the jewel that's shock protected. It could be doing its job, and it's just when I shock it with the screwdriver, it just it absorbs the shock. Okay, but basically, um, the other question is that I'm gonna I'm gonna look at the axle thing I bought again. I'll look at what that was exactly, because it's working. But watch when I set it down flat, it stops. So I think that's kind of impressive. I need to put the automatic movement back on it and then, or just the rotor really. And then, um, and then look at what that axle thing is. It's possible that I, I would just need like a micro press to replace that and that that actually does need to be replaced. Um, <clears throat> okay, so let's <clears throat> I want to go back and look at I think it's interesting to try to put the rotor on it, put the, just put it back together and then move on. Meaning test the other working movement, see if it works at all angles and then build the watch back with the other movement. I feel like this is kind of like my laptop story, like uh, I've completely disassembled and reassembled and oiled the movement, but the problem is, is not solved.
because uh, it's actually a repair issue, not a clean and rebuild issue. Um, but <clears throat> uh, where's my timer? One hour. Um, I'm gonna try to put it put the rotor back on. So, uh, what did that look like? Okay, so that goes up. So this, this little thing has a top and a bottom. So this goes in there like This is that right? And then, uh, no, because, yeah, uh, Now you know how rotors get all those scratches on them.
Oh boy. Ugh, I knew I'd go in there eventually. Maybe that's just what it needs. Okay, so the other possibility is you go you put that put the screw And you put this on top of that. Then you screw the screw in. And you push this forward and screw that a bit more. Hey, how's it going? Good. Back. I'm back at the office here. Uh -huh. How did you go? Fine. I'm making my video again right now. Oh, that's working. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's not bad. Okay. I hope that's the only bill. There might be other bills. Okay. Anyway, that's all you that you that's all you got for now. So good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me call you back in um, an hour or so because I'm in the middle of this. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Okay, so this is interesting because the um, it's not entirely clear to me. What keeps this rotor from falling off? It's almost like the...
perhaps That's a mystery. Maybe, I don't know. I gotta look at this other one.
Okay, so the thing is, it, it all looks correct. Oh, I think I see. Okay, that's crazy. Okay, so I know what it is. Uh, it's kind of obvious. It's just on such a tiny scale. Um, so... This thing Um, okay, two questions. 
One is, where did that screw go? There's actually a screw here. Is this it? It's so tiny. <laughs> okay, I gotta look at this again. Let's try to understand the depth of what's going on here. Stop wiggling. Okay, it feels like, it looks like there's actually a slot inside the... Yes, there is. So actually... This thing goes down, not up. There's actually a slot. Fairly simple. So I think it's going to be easier to assemble this. Perhaps. Okay, so I'm not explaining very well, but basically Okay, I think I can explain this. This thing, this little brass thing is slotted, so it pulls back. You place it over the pin, the, the jewel's over the pin, you slide it forward, and it, it, it goes under, uh, it, 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 it slides under a ring on the, so it's got like prongs, it goes under there and it holds it like that. Um,
Okay, there, it slid under. Now, what I mean as it slid under is uh, it's seated. Now I need to push this brass thing until it goes under the So we're just trying to see if the automatic movement is working. Okay, um, I don't feel like it's working. This is working if I manually drag it, but I see it, it's trying to pull it right there. I just don't see it actually working. Okay, so one other thing. It's possible that the, the stem needs to be in it.
Okay, now I'm, I'm reaching the destructive phase where I'm kind of giving up. I feel like that screw to understand what's going on here. Is that Okay. Sorry, here's what I'm doing. I'm manually winding it a little bit. Okay, winding is working. <laughs> Why would it? Uh, I don't really need to know the answer to that. You say, Why would it work a little bit, but not constantly? It's like. Manually winding is working. I need to screw back in the screw that keeps the crown from falling out. This is basically what I want is just this shot that shows it's working. Uh, 
I disassembled it, I reassembled it, and I made it work. Now, <clears throat> I think that's impressive. I don't think it's going to work consistently over time. I think I just jammed the, cr the crown in too far in order to wind it. It shouldn't be in the, in the movement that deep. I don't know why that happened. And um, I'm tempted just to say, I, the way I want to try to finish this watch is with the other movement, which I have not tampered with. I would say that the experiment was both a success and a failure. It was a success in the sense that I learned how to disassemble and reassemble the watch and that it's not something that uh, anybody should try to do. I, in, in some sense, I succeeded, but in, in some sense, uh, I don't trust that it's going to work consistently. So I'm going to move on to um, just checking the other movement. So... As you may recall, I had a spare movement. And the spare movement needs this gear. And then it needs the face. Mm. Sorry, where's that? So this is our other movement. There's just one thing I want to look at here. This is the movement I was working on. Sorry, I'm... Blah. I'll see you. The thing I'm looking at is the hairspring. Sorry, the hairspring. I'm looking at this stuff right here. This guy. Something has gone wrong.
Okay, the problem is I, I think I broke the the that screw. that you use to Ugh. I'll show you uh... something is going on here and I think I broke the, the screw no well, there's something weird about this screw. Maybe it's stripped. Uh, it's kind of funny that Ugh, it's so frustrating. And then I can't even see what I'm doing. Okay, actually, that's what I wanted. Um, so I wanted to get that. It was it was pushed down too far. So now I can. Place this guy. Okay, a lot of the time with these springs, you gotta do some, you gotta secure it. There's like an order. So we need to secure this spring. Okay, get this screw started. Um, man, I'm doing a terrible job of narrating this because I'm. I think I'm. I'm getting anxious. I just want to get done. But basically, I noticed that this was pressed up incorrectly there 
Now the reason I had to do this, I had to get this screwed down. I have to get it screwed down even more. And then this guy needs to come back. This is the, the spring itself. Okay, there. See, I set that behind that pin. And now this is the way it should be. The movement is working. And this is our spare movement. I'm gonna set that aside now again. Now, did that gear drop out of it? No, it's on the top there. Spare movement. Um, I don't know if this is the right uh, crown and stem. I think it is. I think it came with the spare movement, but I think what I want to do now, because this is working, it seems to be working at all angles. I want to look at the auto winding again, try to determine if, if it's working at all angles or not. I think, uh, <clears throat> how long has it been today? Almost 145, 150. Um, I'm going to case it without the hands to see if I need, I'm going to put the, I'm going to put the dial on it, put it in the case because the case gives it the right relationship with the crown and the stem. And I want it, I, I probably have to put the hands on it. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. Okay. Uh, Now you're probably thinking I just switched it with the other one, uh, but I didn't. Um, I didn't even wind the other one and the other one's not moving. I, I did wind this one and this is the, well, whatever. Um, the case is clean, but this is still kind of at experimental level. The main thing is I need to put the dial on it and I wanna be really careful with the dial um, it's 
So let's give it a shot. Now the the dial I can figure this out from twelve o'clock should be up here. Or no. Okay, dial. And then Okay, for this I need point four, point five. Okay. Still working. I feel like, uh, let's try the hands to see if the My concern about the hands is if I'm going to relume them, I should relume them now. I know, let's put these other hands on it. Because they are kind of spare. No, that's not a good idea either. They're the wrong hands. They will touch the indices.
Okay, here's my plan. Clean, clean house a little bit. I forgot to put the gear, okay. I forgot to put this gear on the, on the, on the clock on the front before I put the dial on it. So anyway, I do need to clean up. Okay, here we have <laughs> working. Cal 44. I just need to put this gear on it.
Now, the hands Um, the next step is to loom the hands, but it's been two hours. I'm going to take a break. And when I come back, I uh, will <clears throat> loom the hands. I'm going to use this Super Luminova. And I have some white. I have two colors. I have green and I have white that glows green in this bag. Um, and I may, I'll probably loom the, the dial also. Oh, there's one other thing. I think I'll do that off camera. This is our case back holder. And this is a spare, this is like a case back holder from some other watch. So I'm gonna try to just shape this I'm gonna shape this so it's similar to that, um, cause I need, I need something similar to that to hold it in the case. And then these screws are left over from the spare movement. I can put them back in the spare movement. Um, but I need to put the face back on the square movement just to put it away. I'm gonna do that off camera. I'm gonna put the spare movement Put that away. Where's, did I just put the face there? Yeah, face, hands, case back screws. Oh, and then this ring that it came in. I'm gonna put this stuff away. And, uh, and then when I come back, we'll finish casing this up. And these were some spare, these are the screws. These are the screws for this guy. These are some other spare case back tabs. These are the screws. Well, actually, I'll put that with the watch, even though I'll, I'll probably organize this again, but.
So this is kind of cool because this is like the, this is everything needed to put this back together as a working thing. And uh, I'm pretty psyched. I wouldn't say it's done until it's been tested. And if it keeps time again, I can't figure out how putting the, the balance wheel on randomly like that, I can't figure out how that could be the proper spring tension to keep perfect time. It seems like it could be off by 360 degrees in terms of that hairspring. And then it's going to be way, way off. Unfortunately, I don't have a time uh, clock or whatever that thing is, you know, the microphone that, to test it and see if it's running at the right beats per second or whatever. But um, that's, you know, that's an insane achievement for me. I wonder if it's possible to prove that this is the one. Can I get in there and see that serial number? I think it was under there, right? That should be, that should be it. That should be enough of the serial number that any doubter can see that that's the same serial number. I could scroll back myself and check it, but I mean, if I want to fake this, I could fake it. Doesn't the fact that it took 10 hours or however long to do this doesn't mean I couldn't be a faker, but I'm not, this is my spare movement. And that's the one I repaired. Cleaned, disassembled, reassembled. Okay, insane. Stopping for now. Okay, so uh, we're at the final stage here of relooming the hands and the dial and then recasing it. And um, <clears throat> uh, still running, which is great. I checked carefully if it's uh, winding and it is winding. It's just that the, it's, uh, I compared it with the other one and the, um, it, the the automatic function is working. It just it, it just a little tiny creep, uh, you know, for each turn of the rotor, it, it just inches it a little bit, so it's hard to see. Um, I also tried the uh, stem and crown, um, winding it with the with the stem, and it seems fine. And it seems the setting function also seems fine when you pull it out. So all that mechanism seems to be working correctly. And then finally, I did a trim down. Um, this extra little, oops, I'm not sure if it's small enough, but I can trim it some more if I need to, uh, case clamp or whatever you want to call it. So, um, I'm going to put the, these things in, I can put these here just so they're out of the way. So I don't accidentally lose them. And the, 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 it, this is going to require some polish on the crystal too, um, before we close up the case. So we'll do that with, with some poly watch. Um, so let me think about this.
Might as well keep this where you can see it. Now, actually, we're gonna move this out of the way. I'm gonna do the hands first, and that's gonna require some space. Um, so, So this is a, this company, Tritech in Switzerland, um, it says Luminova AG. So maybe they changed their name to Luminova. I thought it was called Tritech, but Tritech, I think, yeah, it's sales at Tritech, RC Tritech. So rctritech.com is the website. And um, it, it used to be Tritium was their main product. Now it's, now it's Luminova, which is non- well, I don't know what it is actually. It's supposed to be safe, but uh, it's kind of interesting that it has warnings with it. Um, I, I just want to read this because it's interesting. Dangerous Attention, dangerous components. Strontium aluminate doped with europium and dysprosium. So there you go. It's supposed to be safe, so I don't know why they need the warning, but. Okay, so this, this, this kit that you can buy from them, and this is not an advertisement for them, it's just that I'm just telling you what I'm using. Um, they sell this little kit, and then you, I like it, <clears throat> I've, I've reloomed a bunch of watches. Um, so the powder, for this I'm going to use white. The glow is green, but it looks white and still looking green. So, that's probably... If you could really mix this stuff properly, you would it would take none. It would take such a tiny amount, but it's really hard to. So there's a diluter if you make it too thick, and then there's the varnish. So basically you just mix powder and varnish. So I think I got a pretty good consistency on the first try here. Um, is that varnish? Set that aside. So then the other thing is I learned this from watching other people's videos. You make a little bridge. Now this is one way to do it, <clears throat> to hold the hands while they dry. These are tiny, short little hands. So you don't need a lot of space between these two things. So what we're gonna do is uh, apply the loom and then suspend it like this to dry.
And in both cases, you put the loom on the bottom and it kind of will fill in It, 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 it should settle into the slot. And... What I usually do for this is I take a piece of... Uh, this, this is, I don't know, some kind of skewer like from grocery store, but basically you could do it with a toothpick. If you break it, it'll give you some points, just the way the wood shears, and then that can be used as a brush. Okay, now I'm going to try to I'm trying to save what's, what's here, but I'm not sure that worked. Um, <clears throat> This one is a little bit thick. I think it'll dry up fine. Okay, so I'm worried that if there's too much material there, it'll it'll scrape on the watch face. But I think it'll it'll lose some volume when it as it dries. So I'm gonna set this. Um, I'll set this under here. Now, the more tricky part, very tricky part, on this watch is going to be the dial. So, I'm sure my head's going to go over this. Let's see. Yeah, I'll just do it. Um, I'm going to start at 3 o'clock. Hmm. So I'm getting the largest dot I can get on this. And then I'm just going to touch it to the end of the and these that's so tiny but let's go to four o'clock Five o'clock. 
that one I missed. So I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to fix that. Let me I'm gonna keep going. Two o'clock. One o'clock. The automatic movement wants to. That one again is a little bit off. Now, at 12 o'clock, I'm going to try to put two. One, I didn't go. So I want 12 to be larger and symmetrical, two that are kind of symmetrical so it doesn't look uh, out of balance. Hmm. Kind of too big. So what, what you'll see what happened with this. Okay. So now I'm going to touch up the ones that I don't like. So five o'clock, I put it in the wrong place. So it's already drying up a little bit. So I can just kind of, got to be careful not to touch those other ones. Okay, so that's kind of gone, the, the one that was wrong. Now, one o'clock.
Now 11, might be able to just push that back. Okay, I think that's going to look pretty good. Um, let me see if... Okay, you can see the only thing is by, um, they're not great, uh, but 11 o'clock there's a smudge. 9 o'clock is too big. 11 o'clock there's a smudge, and 1 o'clock there's a smudge. So I'm going to do something about 9, 11, and 1. So 11 had like a, 11 was just, this is just a chunk that fell off when I was cleaning. One o'clock has a chunk to the side from when I tried to clean it. It was a little bit offset, but I'm going to leave that alone. And then nine was just uh, a little bit too big. Three was kind of too big. One o'clock was like offset. Okay, so the idea behind using white paint is that you really don't see it during the day. It doesn't stand out as green. And then at night, you're going to see something like that. So I think that's great. It, it, it looks blue now. Oh, it looks like, is that a reflection or is that? It looks like there's also a piece fell down on the edge uh, below five, like when I was cleaning it. Um, on the Also, 10 is kind of huge. So I'm going to shrink 10 a little bit and look for these pieces. At, there's a piece at 1 and there's a piece at 5. Shrink 10 and clean up 1 and 5 metal. So the important thing is to shrink 10. And then it looked like there was something here. And here, maybe those were reflections. I 
I still see something at 11. And something at 520. 11, 520. Otherwise, it looks pretty good. So, you can also use Radico to try to clean. It doesn't even matter the stuff that's not, you know. Okay. That looks good to me. And then the hands, we know the hands are gonna be fine. Yeah. So hands, dial, and then um, to clean this stuff up before it gets too dry, you just wipe. So this thing is a little needle that the pharmacist gave me because I asked for a hypodermic needle, which he also gave me, but he suggested uh, this is like a thing that they use to prick your finger to draw blood for uh, a blotter type blood test where they just need a blot on a piece of paper. The Theranos prick. Um, but the um, that, ten, that works easier than the hypodermic needle because you can't really can't really draw that stuff in and pump it out or you'd need a lot more of it and it would need to be thinner than it, than you want it to be for the application. Um, Okay, so while these things dry a bit more, Mm -hmm. 
if you have a really bad, badly scratched crystal, I, I have some experience with this because I've, I've been playing with the outsides of watch cases and uh, and relooming and stuff like that without getting into the movements um, to get ready for this movement thing that I just did. Um, so if you have a really bad crystal, you can sand it with like uh, 280, then 400, then 600 grit uh, sandpaper, like the black water wet dry sandpaper. 600 in the last one, last uh, grade with water. And then you can polish out the, the 600 grit sandpaper, you know, that'll make it, it'll, it'll make the crystal look, you know, almost uh, opaque with scratches, but then this stuff is, is abrasive enough, the polywatch to, to um, remove that. So if you have a crystal that's just got huge gouges in it, you just can sand it down until it's flat again, like, and then you, and then you polish out the, the sanding scratches with this stuff. So a lot of crystals can be saved that way. It's funny, now I'm acting like an expert because uh, with the movement, I was pretty first timer, but with this stuff, I'm more experienced. So when I was looking at this through a mag magnifying glass, I saw it was pretty scratched up. The other thing is like, if you try to use this to take out big scratches, it'll, it'll just polish the scratches into, uh, how do you explain it? It can help to use some, it, it helps something, it can help a lot to use something flat if you need to take down the whole surface of the crystal to, to get a scratch out because otherwise you can just be polishing into the scratches and you just end up with more gentle scratches. But this, I saw it was, it had a lot of micro scratches, but I didn't see any gouges. So I didn't, I didn't sand it. And then we kind of, we cleaned the inside with the uh, ultrasonic. So that should be clean, assuming that it was never kind of scratched in the first place on the inside. I think maybe I'll clean this inside a little bit with Brodico. Now this is, even though it was ultrasonic cleaned, this is just in case dust went in there after it was cleaned and dried. Because when I might have stuck a paper towel in there, carried some dust. Okay, so this should be kind of... I see a little bit something... Okay, that looks good. And then maybe I'll... That's just to make sure that any dust attached itself back there is picked up. Now I need to remove the just 
still running. I wish I knew how to polish. So uh, there's an argument not to use metal tweezers to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. And then these things are the hand press pressers. These are from AliExpress. Kind kind of just pick the one that seems appropriate. You can also do this with a press, but I think with a watch this small. That is tricky. We won't really see if that's... I, with this, I'm going to try using the plastic scissors, plastic tweezer. We won't really see if the hand is attached correct, correctly until I change the setting. Okay, that's a fail. So the thing about the those plastic is they're just not as precise. I guess I'll, I should look at those hand, hands quickly. Okay.
Okay, so I'm going to assume... Let me do this. The hands don't want to move off of there right now, so I'm going to... I do this. I made the mistake of using my right hand now. Okay, so now uh, because I touched the, I've been touching things, I'm gonna Okay, so the 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 the, st the stem is in, so I'm gonna give it a turn on the stem screw. I think that's enough. And then I need to place these. I'm going to use the good one, meaning the original one over here. Okay. Um, opposite the stem because the stem is providing some support also there. I'll tell you, I, I, I feel so much more confident as a result of those three days of or four days of doing this, like with tiny screws, right now I would be crying normally and complaining. Now, I still have the concern about potential cross thread. That one was cross threading, but I backed it up a quarter of a turn and it, it popped. And now it's going easy. Okay, that's nice.
I gotta stop using that magnetized screwdriver. I think the orange one is the only one that is magnetized. Okay, so we still have the water seal from my water test around that, see the black? Um, and then the other, the last thing is just to line up. There's a divot. That's like, a, that's where the crown goes. It's hard to see, but there's like a little spot, a semicircle spot there. There you go. It's 1210. I don't know if I mentioned it, but the reason I don't loom the six o'clock is because at night it helps you, if the six is not loomed, it helps you understand this rotation as do the two dots on the 12. So uh, this should be eminently readable at night and I'll, I'll make some photography of it in the dark. Two o'clock still looks a little bit big, but totally functional and hopefully because those are those dots are white like you don't you don't see it at all from a distance wait maybe a little bit actually white dots but that's great oh now the other function to check is i wish th the hands look like they need to be polished i just don't know I don't, i'm not skilled at polishing something that small if i pull this out setting Okay, so it's 740. 
I'm trying to move it where it's in focus here. Uh-oh. Crap. Okay, so the, the, the hand is not moving because it's, it's, st it's stuck on either an indice or the... No, it's too high. Okay, I got to work on that. I didn't... See, it's popping up and it's hitting the crystal. Damn. Oh, now it fell off. Okay, that's what you get. <laughs> but that's kind of... I kind of knew I was taking a chance with that because I... If you press it on too hard... Whatever, I'm making excuses. That was sloppy. But also, I also want to polish that hand. It looks like it's got varnish leaking out from the loom. Oh, that's upside down. That's why. That hand is upside down now. Okay. Well, I got to keep going, apparently. I wanted that to be the finale. Oh, what a pain. <clears throat> Those tiny little freaking case clamps. The truth is I should have tested the hand setting and the flatness of those hands before casing it, obviously. Um... Let me try this. That kind of did work.
Okay, so then the other thing is Okay, the hour hand seems good. Okay, where's that metal one? That seemed to be good. Okay, now let's see if we go all the way around. Oh, interesting. It's not liking... That's tricky. I, 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 there's, there was a little bit of loom sticking up. Now, that I knocked that loom off. It's kind of fun to see how <clears throat> see how that lights up blue. But even though I knocked it off of the five, it's still. How can I get that so you can see it? There's still enough there as long as that other piece doesn't fall off because it's still tacky. Well, we'll see. Might be too dry. Anyway, the hand kind of, there was a little bit of loom sticking up. Okay, so the problem is the hand, it, it had too, too much tilt before, but it needs just a hair of tilt to clear those indices. That is it. That is Freaking it. Hmm. <clears throat> I was lazy. I didn't remove that tab. So I need to try to catch it. Which I think I just did. <laughs> okay, so there's a couple things gotta do. Tighten this screw.
tighten this screw. That's strange, I think I have those upside down. Um, <clears throat> that's interesting, that, that thing wants to behave like an assembly. In other words, the hole is so tight in the in the tab that the screw wants to cling inside there, which is kind of convenient and probably on purpose. <gasps> okay, thank God. But the interesting thing about that is I have that upside down. So I really... Ah! That, that, I know that did not go far. It's probably right here. Just calm down. If I don't find it, it's like the least important part. I'll make a new one. Okay, there's a few things. How freaking annoying. Ah, ah. Oh, it's on the radico. I tell you, this is an emotional roller coaster. Now what I was saying is, okay, I'm, I'm not gonna try to put it together as an assembly. That should not be magnetic. Okay, that's good. Now,
that was nice. Okay, now I think I'm not happy with this. Oh, oh, oh see, I think this screw is not right. It feels too loose. Okay, that feels right. Now, oh yeah, winding. You can see the winding gear move. Can you? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Okay, so hand winding works. Got to be gentle. I don't feel like the movement is as stable in there as it could be. Okay, the divot. Okay, so it's got a wind on it. Now we're going to set the time for 8. One minute before 8. And that is the final result. I'm just going to wait a minute until it's 8 o'clock. I'm looking at that camera because it, it's like, it's like losing its screen brightness for some reason. I can't tell. Does it have a message on it? Okay, it's eight o'clock. According to this Cal 44. That I disassembled, reassembled, cleaned and loomed. Um, I think that's it. I'm going to have some fun editing this. I'll probably on the long version, I'll probably put some thing about how, how the editing works. So, um, it's just DaVinci Resolve multicam editing, but basically it, you kind of have to watch it in real time and just click on which camera to select. Um, so I don't know how long this whole thing is going to be six hours. I edited the first couple hours already, but um, it'll take some time to edit it. And then I'll put some titles probably to try to put in the words for parts when I, when I didn't know what parts were called and stuff like that. So.
Cool. Okay, if you watch this whole thing, which I'm sure nobody ever will, you're insane. But since nobody ever did that uh, and will do that, you're probably not insane. You probably skip to the end to see if it worked out, and it did. So that's insane. You can watch the short version, presumably, and see kind of how I did it, and the long version as proof that I actually did it. All right. Thank you. Okay, I wanted to take one little victory lap and uh, show off the loom. Um, so I turned off all the other lights so I can dim these lights. But first, uh, the oh, in the bag I put the spring. That's I found cleaning up. I found one spring that I. This is the handmade spring that I made. Uh, that's a prototype. Um, and then this is a screw from a different um, small watch ladies watch this this, this is an example of a, I, I don't remember how much I paid for this but less than a hundred dollars um, it's it's also oh you can't see it in the thing that has a, a seconds hand and a date function and it's it's also um, tiny no I'm not gonna there's nothing wrong with that uh, but the point is um, can you imagine how complicated that movement is anyway I had some old arsomatic watch I had taken those some parts out of and that uh, that's a screw out of that okay so the two things one is that the IWC is not the most complicated tiny watch ever made there are more complicated watches and then the other thing is just to charge this up loom wise and then turn off oh something's wrong with there you go it's got some reflections, but that's basically the loom. That's a Sony um, A7S II, so it's got it, it's it's overdoing it on the gain. But um, actually, I'm curious about this. All these Sony cameras are great for um, yeah. This is even better, RX100. Um, that looks great. Crazy. Let's charge that up again. I am so proud of that. That is that is crazy. I'm not really appreciating it as much as I should. I fucking restored that watch. I disassembled it. And I've never done this before. I've never restored any watch. In terms of taking the movement apart and putting it back together again. And I did it with that tiny automatic IWC Cal 44 1959. The same year that... Carl Jung did that interview that I showed at the beginning of the long video. Carl Jung was owner of, co-owner of IWC with his wife and family in the early 1900s. So cool, I can't believe it. I never thought I could do that. I did not think I could do that. Okay. Um, was there something else? Oh, I'm going to probably do a follow-up on editing also.